Red light therapy. You might have heard about it. Sounds like magic. Is it snake oil? No, it's actually effective at quite a few things. In fact, a study just came out showing that red light therapy used on the back of the neck reduced blood sugar levels by, get this, 28%. The practitioners did nothing else. They just used red light therapy and it literally turbocharged their mitochondria to suck blood sugar out of their blood to be used as what? fuel. Pretty remarkable stuff. You can just add that to the amazing list of things that red light therapy does. Do you think in the future we're gonna have like- Sugar vampires. Beds that are designed or like rooms that like houses are started. Like it, it makes sense to me with all the positive effects of red light therapy. I haven't read anything with any sort of adverse effects from it. Why would you not start to make like bathrooms or like some rooms in your house or the bed or like above the bed? Like, it just you has have to wait till the cost goes substantially down, you right? Know? Like, so people are like, wow, there's so much value to it that like there's more market demand. I mean, or come on, we do we yeah. do things in houses now that heat the tile floors, it costs thousands exactly. of dollars. Like, it can't be that crazy to run red light in the ceiling or something like that. It's like, just because you have to do it for like 10, 15 minutes. So maybe yeah, but that's why a bath that's why a bathroom makes sense. Yeah, so imagine yeah. if, switch how long for... do you spend in the shower brushing your teeth and everything yep. like yeah. I mean yep. that's perfect. That's to where me. I put the juve. That's where I would do yeah. it too. I oh, would literally remember? run it in my bathroom lights and like imagine coming in you switch and it's all that's red it. light and you're shower and brushing and like every morning you're it's, getting it like that. We I remember when we first met with Juve, uh they were one of they have remember how skeptical you were at the very Super skeptical. I mean I was too, oh. but <laughs> so like regrows hair, makes your skin uh you know reduce like, this wrinkles is wizardry, speeds up recovery, helps you raise testosterone. Like, you know, it's like the list of things. It's like, oh, it does everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no thanks, right? And then they sent me all these studies, some of them going back to the 70s. I was like, what? This is wild. And some of the studies were done by NASA, in fact. Yeah. Uh, and the studies just keep coming out. This is the latest one. Reduces blood sugar. Yeah. This that, is crazy. That's like, amazing. Yeah, for people who have like insulin resistance or issues with that, uh, now exercise is the best possible thing you could do, obviously, building muscle. But how many, you know, imagine the average person, they don't want to work out and want to get up. It would be pretty easy to be like, hey, look, when you sit down in the morning for your coffee, just put this on the back of your neck, yeah. and this will make a, a big difference. Why Why the back of the neck? That's just what they did in the study. It could be anywhere. I think it doesn't matter. I really don't. Oh, uh, yeah, I thought yeah. that was Because what it does, so for people who don't know, this, there's a particular wavelength of light that literally turns on the mitochondria. It literally, it, it's like, so your mitochondria, think of them, I, I know people say this, this is super general. It's obviously more complex than this, but think of, of the mitochondria as like energy producing engines of every cell. So it's basically like, telling the mitochondria, create more energy, you know, burn more energy, uptake more glucose, utilize more energy. So it, it turbocharges them. So what does that mean? That means that all the cells that are powered by mitochondria now become kind of turbocharged, right? So skin cells regenerate faster, muscle cells recover faster, hair regrows. And because mitochondria use, you know, glucose and ATP and all this stuff, it's going to uptake more of it by, by using it. In the past, you used to have to go to expensive, like you have to go to a dermatologist's office or like really high-end skincare places to get it. And it just wasn't feasible because it was expensive. You have to use it on a semi-regular basis, you know, four days a week or so. Yeah. Um, and if you wanted to get an actual home unit that was legit, like the ones that yeah. they were well, using. There's so many snake oil salesmen out yeah. there that are selling you just like painted red bulbs. Yeah, well, it has to be the right wavelength, but, and Juve does this. But before you would you would cost you like ten thousand dollars to get like a legit panel, like yeah. the ones they use in studies. Now, of course, Juve, much less expensive. But if you go on Amazon, you'll see all these red light devices. And I know this because I'll tell my family members about this, uh, cousins and stuff, and, and they'll the be like, "Oh, I like bought this. Oh, I for got eighty this. bucks. <laughs> yeah, dude, it was like half price, and I got this hat with like red lights in it." I'm like, oh man, look at the wavelength, bro. It's the wrong one. It's not doing anything for you. <laughs> so okay, is it? Does it have a, a systemic effect? Yep. So then. Is it why is it net? Well, it's not necessary then. Obviously, why why would I get the huge panel and stand in front of it naked versus You're affect more mitochondria? Okay, more. There's a local effect and a systemic effect uh, that happens. So oh. most of it would happen locally when it comes to depending on the wavelength. Some red light. So Ju has panels that'll that'll penetrate deeper. And some that are more on the surface. So the surface ones more for skin. The deeper ones yeah, more like for muscle. Yeah, like alternates between the. That's two. right. I know yeah. they have the li the little yeah. ones. They have a, a option, one mm -hmm. or the yes. other, and then yeah. the big panel has a combination of both. Yes, yeah, I yes, know yes. that. So if you want like muscle recovery, get the deeper one. If you want skin care, 
then you get the one that's a little more surface. Nonetheless, they all stimulate the mitochondria. I still like the idea if, if like, you know, we're getting rid of the need for cars in your garage and everything that we were talking about yeah. like a while back, like we turn that into like gym slash recovery space, you know, and then like have those all over the walls and over the ceilings and, you know, just be in there and turn it on. Yeah. It's, it, it is one of those things. Like if it's that effective and valuable, like it should start like making its way into actually like in the structure of the house. The house. Yeah. yeah. I feel like if you were, if you're building like, let's say a new home right now, the same way you have an option a lot of times to put solar or in fact, California, you have to now, but I mean, if you, if you had that option, you know, Oh, for 20,000 more, I could do this. Oh, for 20,000 more, I can have my garage completely outfitted in red light or my yeah. bathroom completely outfitted in red light. It's interesting that they haven't moved in that. Is, you think it's just, Lack of awareness still. I think it's just because it's now you can buy the panels and hang them up yourself maybe, but I don't know. I bet you some people already have done what you're saying. I wouldn't, I would imagine like high yeah. end home. Some people are like custom. That would be cool. Yeah, maybe maybe look, that, look that up, Andrew. See if you can find, see if you can find some like custom, custom red light, you know, home. Red stuff. light therapy rooms or something yeah. like that. Yeah. I, uh, I, this I mean, is I the, would do that. This That's is the cool. longest, sure. I've, this is the longest I've consistently used the juve. Yeah. So I've used it now. I don't know, maybe three, four days a week for months now. And uh, my my skin is, it makes a huge difference on my face. It's so weird. Yeah. It's In fact, we saw, who do we run into? We ran into uh, Jordan Shallow yesterday, right? And he walks up to me, he's, what the hell, man? You look like you're getting younger and I'm getting older. Nobody ever tells me that. <laughs> First of all. Nobody ever tells me that. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, all right, you know, that's yeah. good for, that's good for, you know, one point for, for red light therapy. No, this is the most consistent I've seen you with it. I think I probably used it the most. You I, did. Yeah. I'm, and I've actually been inconsistent with it lately, which I need to get back yeah. into that. But It's this, just one of those I things. This it. is my panel. That's why. Yeah. This is normally at my house. Corby I brought it in for the boys for when they were doing that competition, and I haven't taken it back Well, yet. think about it. Like, Name one non-exercise thing and non-pharmaceutical that will immediately, like in that short period of time, to use it. I don't know how long they did it in the study. I think it's like 10, 15 minutes. That will lower your blood glucose by over twenty five percent. Name okay, name right, something. Yeah. Okay, now let, let let's weird. Let's, let's there's let's not role a play. supplement. There's nothing that'll do that. Let's yeah. role play a scenario though. Okay, now you're you're talking to your average client that we used to get first time. You're kind of meeting them or whatever with that, and they're sitting in front of you, and mm -hmm. they've got chronic pain. They are 40, 50 pounds overweight. Terrible diet. They don't exercise yet, and they're buying training from you. What? Where in that situation, um, and they ask you about red light. I know you're not recommending. I'm not you're yeah. going like, oh, go get a red light there. No, like, no. I know you would never We're say exercise. That. But let's say someone like, says yeah. like, hey, and I, I read a lot about the mm -hmm. red light therapy, and I heard a lot of benefits from it. Um, you know, my husband and I were thinking about buying it. Um, what do you think? And I'm buying training from you. Yeah. I, yeah so, and so you're, so what do you say to them in that situation? I'm going to say you're going to notice a lot of uh, benefits on your skin. And I didn't, so this study didn't exist before. So now I would say, it will lower your blood sugar. It'll help with your blood sugar, help with insulin sensitivity. If you're thinking about getting it, I think it's a good idea. Three days mm -hmm. a week yeah. while you're doing something, right? Reading, um, having your coffee, whatever, just shine it on yourself. And, and that's, that's like I said, it's a significant, that's crazy. Yeah. You, can, you can't buy a supplement. You can't, there's nothing that'll do that besides exercise and pharmaceuticals. So mm -hmm. I feel like I would, I would probably say it a little different. Like I would say to my client that asked that like, if you have the expendable income, absolutely, because yeah. it has lots of benefits of course. to it. Yeah, of course. But if you're telling me I have, you know, a thousand something dollars to invest in myself for my health and stuff like that, and that's all you have, I spend it on personal training. That's right, yeah. training or putting together like meal totally. prepping, good food, good healthy. Totally. Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna tell them if, if I'm gonna, but I mean that's kind of how I feel with a lot of supplements, even yeah. too. Same thing. It's like if you have Crazy the money, diet, son. All those things are are beneficial and, and only going to help the process. Yeah. But you're always going to, I'm always going to tackle the big rocks with my people first before I'm like, hey, let's slap this on. Because yeah. if you, if you default to that as you think that's what's going to get you healthy and in shape, like. So here's a study I would like to see. We've, we've, we've speculated on this. That's I would, I would like to see. Yeah. That's a, that's, that, that, I think those are the juve panels they, they are, put on their wall. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah that's a big one. Here, here's wall. what I would like to see. I would like to see a study where people use the red light. Uh, they take creatine and then they use the red light to see if it increases the uptake and usage or in, in, in hmm. utilization. Hmm. Cause creatine obviously turns ATP. I did ATP that. I did powder. that for right. quite a while. So I just, did I, but I, just, I, but I, I mean, I don't know if I could, you know, yeah, I, know. I, I want to look at a study. I want to see what the numbers show. I think it would be really fucking yeah, cool. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, because uh, that it's like first off, creatine just to better assimilate it, or well, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, if it's turning on the mitochondria, yeah. they're going to burn more ATP too. Yeah, give them that creatine. You know, make it make it. I think there would Super be supercharge it. Yeah. I think there'll be a cumulative effect. I think there'll be yeah, a that would be interesting. Yeah, kind of like a you know uh, one plus one equals three type of thing where they where they work better together than they do synergistic, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Um, I'd like to see that because creatine by itself is turning out to be probably the best longevity supplement period and a story that you take, add something like this to it. I, I would speculate we would see some pretty and cool, add a little mot C in there. You know. <laughs> well, uh, the peptide, yeah. <laughs> Today's program giveaway is this super bundle. That's a lot of programs and we're giving them away. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it, subscribe to this channel and then turn on your notifications. If you win. We'll notify you in the comments section. We're also running a sale on some programs this month. Maps Bands is half off and the Hard Gainer Bundle, that's half off. You can get either one or both if you click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Are you guys uh, are you guys getting excited at all about uh, London? I mean, it's around the corner for us now. Yeah, I haven't put a lot of thought into it yet, but yeah, I mean, it's it's gonna be cool, dude. I think, uh, and you've never been there before, right? No, I've never I've never been there at all. I mean, I'm I, anytime an opportunity. Can we talk to, about it or what's going on? here? Yeah, we can talk. Why can't we talk about it? Right? Oh, we can't. That was not, a secret. Can we not talk about it? I have no idea. Yeah, yeah we can talk. That, that means Doug doesn't want you to talk about it. <laughs> no, we no, I don't know. No, yeah. we can talk about. Oh, it. we can. Well, I, I mean, what made me think of it is I I realized that we we're gonna miss out on the NCI event because the NCI event yeah. is the same time that we'll be out in London. So yeah, which is gonna. I mean, he's got the lineup Jason has of speakers again. I feel like every time he does one of these events, he just keeps leveling up the speakers that he has on it. I think you know what? You know what they the do really forms. well. Um, uh, you know, I, I kind of. I'm always thinking of like the right words to describe things because it's so effective, right? That, that just how you you explain things and the words you use make such a big difference in how people understand it. Mm -hmm. What NCI does really well is they try to influence the culture around trainers and coaches more than other certifications, more than just teaching you this is good nutrition, this is whatever. They're trying to develop a culture to where the trainers and coaches that come out of their certifications approach things with a mindset. They approach things with a particular philosophy. Yeah. Um, and one that we align very strongly with. That's 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 what they do really well, uh, better than anybody else. Well, no, I think that's what, realistic, like information, relatable things, like how know, to communicate, applicable. Yes. Yeah, like how do I apply this right away, and how do I get my clients to you know buy into these ideas? Totally. Like, that's what really matters, anyway. Well, I mean, I think that's what originally connected us so much to Jason was that that was one of the things that we wanted to do with creating this business was we wanted to take all this high level information, all the science, all the studies, all the certifications and degrees and experience that we have accumulated over all these years. And how do you take all that and distill that down to the average person or trainer yeah. so that they actually makes impact in their life and That's they right. make, and they make behavioral changes, not let's put a show together and like teach everybody how smart we all are and let them know that like, Oh, we're an authority in this space because we know this much and we've been doing this much. No, it's like, okay, let's take what well, actually works in application yeah, with like, communication and, and in its simplest form too. I mean, and I think that's really, it's interesting how challenging that is for really smart coaches and trainers. Like when the, it's like the, the, the smarter they get sometimes the more difficult it is for them to do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, Example that's our our good buddy Shallow. Like that guy is like a walking encyclopedia. Yeah. I mean, one of the most like I learn something new from every time I hang out. He's one of the few people, and we have doctors on here all the time and very brilliant yeah. people. Jordan, when Jordan talks, I find myself like hanging on every word because I'm like trying to like processing it. Yeah, I'm trying to <laughs> process it. And then like, and then also break it down. Like, okay, what? Okay, I get what he, he also just, has a. Pro, he just has a profound. Vocabulary. Well, no, besides that, yeah. uh, a profound understanding of how the human body works. Yes. Yeah. Like on the yeah, deepest yeah. level. And yeah. then he has a crazy vocabulary and, and you combine all that. And it's like, it is. I think he's, uh, uh, the thing about Jordan is he's really good at teaching coaches and trainers how to understand these concepts, program design. I think that he's phenomenal at that. I mean, I, I learned, like, like you said, mm -hmm. when I talk to him for 15 minutes, I never don't learn something. I yeah. always learn something. From but him. I also think, and then, so at the same time, I know Doug had him do like an elevator pitch for 
his um his certification for yeah. us so we had the, had video of that and and doug was just like talk to me like i'm a four-year-old and he's like you could just see how hard that is for him <laughs> to do that yeah. and i do i think i think you get yeah. you, you get that high of a level of education a, a lot of people really once they get there have a really hard time coming back the other direction this is something that i think jason and nci have done really well i mean jason's brilliant in his own right that's right now he's very especially when it comes great to great communicator yeah. yeah nutrition and helping athletes and the average person like he's got a very very high level understanding of that but then when you talk to him i mean he drops f-bombs he's like yeah. relatable like he has a he does a really good job of simplifying it. Look, people, uh, historically, Carl Sagan, Carl Sagan, I think astrophysicist, right? Mm -hmm. He, he turned an entire generation of kids, uh, into wanting to learn about space, the cosmos in, into wanting to learn about the cosmos. Carl yeah. Sagan, there was lots of astrophysicists, all brilliant, but what he did very well was he communicated in a way that resonated with the average person, Milton Friedman, economist, Nobel prize winning. Now, when's the last time an economist, was interesting. Never. They're the most boring people <laughs> in the world. Milton Friedman, he really impacted the world and the average person. I mean, he was on talk shows. This is back in the 70s and 80s. He would speak at colleges because he, understand, he understood how to communicate so effectively that the average person became interested in economics. That's what got me interested was listening to Milton Friedman. So this is like how you make real impact as a coach or trainer. It's The knowledge just has to be there. You got to know your stuff. But can you convey it? And does the per does it really resonate? Does do you think really do you resonate? think both are necessary for the world, or do you think oh one could do without the other, or do you think that you don't? You understand I think you need you need the brilliant people. Yeah, I think both. But and then you need you know, of course you need average people, but you need the brilliant people to to come up with the ideas and concepts. Yeah, and hit theories. the fringe stuff. Yeah. Right? And then you need the person to take that and go. Okay, here's what. Here's what yeah, you kind of want can somebody to always be on the cutting edge. Right? Totally. Somebody out there that's like always just buried in the research and like uh, really, you know, high level. And then, you know, people in between to, to distill it down for the yeah, rest yeah, of yeah. us yeah, and yeah, like yeah. communicate it. I remember when like- I like to think we're the people in between. That's what I think. For I sure. Hope so. yeah. I hope so. I like, I remember like uh, when Jordan Sallow ex uh, explained how uh, chiropractic adjustments, why they feel good. And he, he, he explained, nobody ever explained it to me well. Nobody ever explained it. They're like, oh, it's aligning this, aligning that. Eh, it's not really, that's not really what's happening or I don't know. And he said, there are certain like joints and small tight muscles that are holding things together. This, and now he said it in his words, so I'm kind of taking it down, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. That you, like, it feel, like when a muscle's tight, it's tight because the CNS tells it to be tight. One of the ways you can get a muscle to loosen up is to stretch it, okay? There are going to be parts in your body, the spine or small joints where you're not going to be able to do that. It's just tight. It's not happening. It's not moving. And when a good chiropractor knows how to pop the joint, really the pop is not the important part. The part is that that's important is that they're articulating the joint and causing a small stretch in that muscle and that muscle then finally relaxes. And that's why after you get into chiro a chiropractic mm -hmm. adjustment, you're like, oh, that feels so much better. So that makes you, more sense from a muscular perspective. Totally. Yeah. So you totally. would categorize even the popping of a chiropractor as a stretch. That's what's happening. Yeah. The pop is just gas yeah. being yeah. released between the you know suction of the two joints. That doesn't mean anything. I could pop my knuckles. Yeah. yeah. But what they can do is they can go in and they can get a rib to move just slightly or a vertebrae to move just slightly. So the tight muscles around it get that. Just like if you stretch your bicep out because it's too tight. Now it releases. Well, what's funny is the person is, will associate that, right? Of course. You know, because they hear the noise and then it sort of like uh, triggers yeah. that response. It's more like proof that you were able to get the joint to move, but it's not necessary. Good chiropractors tell you that. The pop doesn't mean. He had other stuff right. in that conversation yesterday too that I was blowing my mind. Like I, I want to go back and listen to it again because it was like, I was like, oh, I need to go back and listen to that again yeah. on like how he explained the, the communication from like the receiving end versus like just yeah. c communicating from one direction and then doing things differently. How that would like, oh, that changes the communication process process and like i was like blown i'm always blown away there's always something that he drops that i'm like i know what i've never i've never thought of it that way and that's like and i know that like that's actually the <laughs> the, the true way we've all heard it in different ways communicated mm -hmm. and i always appreciate listening to him dude i gotta tell you something embarrassing happened this morning at the gym it's kind of more more i felt bad than anything so i'm i'm training and uh you know i have my headphones on i'm in my own world right and uh, i'm doing my thing and I'm resting between sets and about, I don't know, three or four benches over this woman is working out doing her thing. And I, you know, I notice her or whatever, cause there's people around me. Anyway, she, I, I finished my set, put my weights down. I sit kind of facing forward, just kind of resting. 
and she racks her dumbbells. I'm catching her through the corner of my eye. She turns to walk back and trips over one of the feet of the bench and kind of stumbles, catches herself, but she's okay. Now, I saw that. She's too far for me to help. I saw she was okay, but I kind of giggled because of the way she Oh, kinda, God, you did right? not. Bro, she made eye contact with me right when I giggled. Oh, God. Like, and then she looked at me. I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, bro. What an asshole. Yeah, dude. What an asshole, bro. Oh, my God. She almost fell and I laughed. Oh, You know what God. I mean? Oh. You know what she <laughs> I went, I'm like, hey, I'm so sorry. She's like, it's all. She like walked away. Oh, you there. apologize? I did. Well, yeah, of course I apologize. I just laughed at you falling. I know. Yeah. Well, at least you did that. Well, some people would do that and not do anything. You know what I'm saying? So oh. at least you did that. It's, I mean, shit. That's rough because that's my first response if I even hurt myself to try and laugh it off. But then like, you know, well in the pain. Yeah, but she immediately looked but, yeah. up, She immediately looked like, oh, shit, she looked. That's like Why when someone that? tells Why you like a so crazy funny? story, like if something like really bad that happened to him and it's kind of funny, but then you think about, then you after you laugh, you go like, God, if I was in that situation, yeah. like, that would be terrifying. Or that would, <laughs> you know, it's like a natural. Yeah reaction right someone tells you something like that that's so crazy or so ironic and then you you laugh but then you have this moment after yeah. the fact where you go like oh, oh no, shit that would be devastating right yes, like if that dude. happened to me yeah. right so i hate those moments and they live with you forever you know what i mean like for the re for, for i know for a long time i'm gonna think about that poor lady oh yeah but i feel like you solved it by saying something because yeah. that's that how would, trust me i have embarrassing moments that i just can't that would torture me if i did that and then i didn't say anything and I just left alone because yeah. then I'm like, oh, that lady just thinks I'm an she asshole. She took off. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, sorry. Uh, How old was she or approximately? Uh, probably in her 50s. Okay. Yeah, so, so you know, older than me. Yeah. It doesn't matter though. It's this poor lady, you know, she almost fell. She looks over the guy. You didn't even help her. I just kind of laugh. Mean, oh, like an asshole, you know? <laughs> I mean, if it was a jacked young dude and he fell, I mean, would you say anything? I'd still feel bad. You know, I still would have said sorry. <laughs> you wouldn't say anything. I still would have said sorry. I would have gave him a round of applause, dude. Yeah, I feel right. like for sure yeah. Justin would. No, Justin was like a like, bodybuilder guy right. who was just done looking at himself yeah. in the mirror. And then he yeah. turned around and he tripped over the thing. Justin would be, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, just, <laughs> and, and like intentionally make eye contact. <laughs> yeah. Oh, looks like you need functional fitness. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not that much of a dick. Maybe do some stability work, buddy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Those muscles do help. Way to go, yeah. balloon animal. <laughs> <laughs> just to say something out loud. I would not. I would what a not. Dude. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm an asshole, but I keep it to myself. Uh, I, I can. I can only imagine because you've worked out with Justin in bodybuilder gyms, right? Yeah. Is he just the whole time like, oh, he's <laughs> <laughs> Is it just like I it depends the, whole the level of it, right? Yeah, because I actually I I don't mind it. I like the bro vibes, you know. I like, feel like I, if he's with like me, I feel like it, I think I'm like the he's buffer. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Which is probably how I feel like when we're doing all this weird functional shit or in a gym. Yeah, like, but yeah, you don't go push a, sled and shit. Yeah, but you don't go to a functional gym. I'm I don't know. I wouldn't and look around and be like, what a bunch of idiots. I don't think that, right? Yeah. But bodybuilders just invite that, don't they? When you get the dudes doing that sideways chest press and the weird. I don't mind it if they're serious, you know, like if it's like a goals gym, everybody's like really like, I'm like, oh, this guy goes on stage. It's the, it's the half-assed kids it, that are just like in front of the mirror and they're doing it all for the gram and they're like, you know, into themselves. I like, okay. So that's how I, I, I feel. I feel that too. Like, so it's to me, yeah. and that's kind of like the, the, you know, like we talked the other day about the affliction and the tap out shirts yeah. when you're like, you just start. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But if, hey, if you're a fucking black belt or you're like an MMA champion and you rock, they're like, cool. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I feel like that's the same thing in bodybuilding. Like, if you are at that level, like, you, like, if I'm looking at your physique and I, I'm admiring it because it's like on that level, like, fucking use the mirror, bro. I'm yeah, going to watch yeah. you for a while, too. Uh, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, like, I'm impressed. Like, you know, if you take yourself that serious, but if it's like, you know, if you're just that guy that's like, I know exactly what you're doing. No, the one, and and it makes sense, by the way, because one of the one of the most awkward or mo most difficult things for me was the, the you know, presenting my physique on stage. Like, yeah. I didn't, I was, I did not like that. I was not that guy who stood from the mirrors, but th I was supposed to practice that. You know, and I just didn't like doing that at all. And so, you know, you get used to that. Okay, I need to learn how to do this. Like, how do I present my shoulders from this angle? And so you're now I also to become this guy who's obsessed staring myself in the mirror. And, so, <laughs> and I know that I feel like, oh, my God, who's but the only thing that I feel that saves me is like, okay, I'm put together right now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, if I wasn't like that would be I would feel really weird, which I there's those guys all the time. Yeah, yeah. there's a guy who's like, you know, what I'm saying, yes. <laughs> you know, that, the, yeah, the most annoying, the chance. most annoying person to me, the only person type of person I've ever really seen because I don't ever say anything. Fine, do your thing, whatever. Is the dude that sits on the machine or the bench and texts forever. Does it, yeah. It's not even working out. I've actually gone up to someone and said, hey, could, would you mind resting That's over annoying. there? Yeah. Or can you text over there so I can use this? There's three, so, there's three for me. 
Oh, yeah, so what is that ones? one? The, the other one is the guy that, that has all of the stuff like for a circuit. The CrossFit oh, guy. Oh, yeah, that's CrossFit annoying. Guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the most annoying. Do you ever go and grab then, one of the machines? Like, oh, what I, yeah, I, I use it. And then especially I go right to the one that's going to go next. And I'm not even like <laughs> supposed to. And yeah. I'm like, oh, just a minute, bro. You know, yeah. and then I take like an hour. Um, but yeah, or it's the it's it's the guy that's got the leg machine that takes all of the weights. And it's all walk by and be like, oh, you need some more weights? Yeah. <laughs> what about the shadow boxer? Yeah. That's oh, yeah, the shadow I mean, that's, if you're a real, that, that if you're a real boxer. At, they're never a real boxer. I know. No, I mean, no, Josh never. does that, right? So he, He's I feel, in here. I know. But and still. you can tell he knows how. I'm yeah, talking about a, the regular dude. Like, in well, that's funny. Sets yeah. of curls. He wouldn't do that in front of like the dumbbells or something. I don't know. I have to ask Josh if he would do that. What do you think, Andrew? think josh would do that in front of the dumbbells at, at a big gym uh oh yeah that's a yes bro he's oh, trying to be nice right now yeah, to his employee okay. no, <laughs> he's like yeah, yeah he's, he's, a young, he's young kid but Jen, yeah. josh actually i don't you guys didn't list what i so one of my thing and and like you know my bodybuilder friends are the ones that are guilty of this is the the leaning over the dumbbell rack to do rows i fucking hate that. oh it's so oh, stupid yeah. what you know why they saw some pro bodybuilder do it. Do yeah. you know what else you could do? You could put your hand on a bench. That's like that's what I mean. Line. You it's could carry thing. it out of the way so you're not taking yes. up all that space. Yeah. yeah, it's very good for you to learn how to carry that yep. heavy dumbbell over there and yep. do that. And you can create that same angle, same everything, and you just look silly because it's like uh, it's, you're being lazy because you don't want to take it five feet yeah. over to your your bench and do that. And now you're not in the way of everybody mm -hmm. walk. That I, I, that bothers me. My yeah. favorite. I'll tell you what my favorite people are. 100% favorite, favorite people in the gym are the consistent elderly people that, because I go early in the morning yep. and there's like the same 10 people who are probably, I would say late sixties, early seventies. There's a woman that looks like she's in her eighties. She, and they always go in there. They always work out. They always smile. They always do the thing. And I'm always like, oh man, you know, I love that. Absolutely love that. Like yeah, I'll get out of the way for you. I'll do whatever you need, do your thing. Like it's so. Um, I would say that's actually the most, the most inspiring thing for me is actually for sure. not a Jack bodybuilder guy, no, you no. know, with the most amazing physique. No. It's the 60 year old yeah. that looks super healthy and fit yeah. still like that. I see that. And I'm like, dude, that's what I want to be at that age. Still looking put together, still looking healthy, hey, still strong. I like, will tell you guys, yeah. I have a nemesis. I have a nemesis though at this gym. Do I tell you guys another one? It's not the, the it's sauna. Not the, no, not, not the, the old guy. sauna guy. The Asian sauna he whooped guy. my ass, so I, I okay. gave up on that. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm talking. There's a dude in there that's kind of. So it's a. It's a. It's like a. Up. It's like a nice country clubish type gym. This is right? you're over at the country club, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's not like there's no bodybuilders really working out in there. I'm like the most jacked guy in there by far, right? But now there's another guy, bro. That's the and move, he, I guess. And he looks so. like he, you know, he lifts and stuff. And, yeah. You know, every, we work out around the same time, and I could feel the vibe. Right? I wonder if I know who he is. He like is he around fifty? Uh, wears he looks like he might, all time. He wears a tank top. He uh, looks like he's my age. Kinda. Yeah, yeah. I, was just, I don't think he trains his legs. That's what I'm telling myself. Oh, uh, maybe it's not. You know what is I mean? This guy was actually this. Guy. No, he's not. Oh, okay. <laughs> it? Trying to say it's me. <laughs> it's the mirror, Sal. So <laughs> it's you. What do you, so do you go? Do you go oh, squat wow. every day that he's there? No, he's I never there. lift heavy there. I never lift heavy there. I go here. I, I come here when I lift heavy. But I, we just, I could tell we walk by each other. It's almost like. There's not a nod. We never nod each other. Like, hey, what's up, bro? It's more like it's a, more like a squint. Yeah, it's more like a. I'm the guy. Okay, I'm, I'm the guy. Work out I'm the guy. This is my. This is yeah. my. Fun. I'm the what time of year? You got to come an hour later, dude. Yeah. That I never. I never felt comfortable lifting heavy at that gym. Yeah. Really? Yeah, because it Why? is so. It just doesn't feel right, especially upstairs where you're on the. Up yeah, I don't lift heavy there because. Uh, you can hear the floor. Like, <laughs> well, just heavy lifting for me. Uh, I like to be alone. I like to do my thing. I don't want my ego getting out of control. I don't want to whatever. I there, I, I, I train like a bodybuilder. There. I agree. I Dude, get a you, pump. you know, it's funny. I used to train at this place called like Total Fitness, and um, there was a couple. Total. total. Yeah. Real, real clever. Um, and uh, <laughs> there was this couple there that literally looked just like me and Courtney. And we would go in. I, this is when I used to train a lot because they had a, a kids club. And so like, you know, the kids were, were younger. And so we'd put them in there and then we could do our thing. And every time they'd come in, we'd be like, eh. and they were like, <laughs> <laughs> we would just, we, we'd face off with them all the time. It was so weird. Bro, that it, is so, I, I don't think I've ever met so, a couple who I think Katrina and I look like. Yeah. That's kind of, that's really rare. They looked like exactly like us too. And it was like, we're, and we never really like said hi now, or were they anything. A, were they a bizarro version? In other words, you're the more, you're the better looking version? I or think, were they pretty I good? I think they were a little better looking than Oh, oh you're yeah, bizarro? bizarro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No! <laughs> I think that's just, why I was so angry. Just for him. Yeah. Oh my God, I was, I was the bizarro guy the whole time. I was stronger oh. than that pussy. Yeah. Anyways. 
I, 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 when I would, that couple comes in, there's the ugly version of yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're talking about yeah, you guys at dinner. Yeah. Oh, like, I never slam weights or nothing, dude, but I just, I caught myself, dude. I'd just be like, you know, <laughs> when I was done. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> Every time they were there, I'd, <laughs> the best, dude. Oh, God, dude that's, that's the best. No, that's brutal. That, no, where I go, it's it's perfect because I, I my ego's not, ch- except for the freaking my nemesis. But other than that, <laughs> Nobody cares. I do my thing, except if I leave a little past, sometimes I got to get out of there real quick and I don't have time to do the steam room. And it's right around eight, like 10, eight, 10, eight, 15. These, these, <laughs> these like 50 year old, this is the average age of these women, like fifties, right? Line up for this. I don't know what class is about to happen, but they all line up <clears throat> outside the class. They all uh, get ready to go to the gym. This is that kind of 50-year-old woman. You ever been, you know, in the gym, there's, that, there's a 50-year-old woman that comes to work out, she don't give a fuck. Yeah. There's the one that shows up and they're like, I'm going to dress nice. Oh, yeah, I'm going to yeah. put on some makeup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. going to do my... So it's literally... Hairs down. There's a lot of them, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And I have to walk by them at the end of my workout, which typically I'm, you know, normally oh, I'm by this you. point in my... Down you know. to your tank top. <laughs> bro. Oh, boy. Bro. Woo! Veins popping. The, the, the smiles you and know, the You're looks. the talk of the steam room in there. Oh, yeah. my God, <laughs> Here he comes, Gladys. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like slow-mo. Just oh, like extra slow oh, I actually, God. There's actually a couple of women in there. I uh, swear to God, they wear like fitness heels. They look like almost sneaker with their heels, bro. <laughs> what are you wearing? That's actually a great business opportunity. <laughs> the fitness, the fitness, fitness heels? heels. Yeah. Like, Dude, you're talking all, about gym. You know what I'm funny? So, okay. I've, I've talked about this before. You guys know this, right? Like I'm, I'm paying for, I don't know how many gym memberships right now. I think I have like four or five. And so, and this has been years. You just like right? to donate to gyms. That, okay. Well, that's, that, by the way, that's how I justify. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. I literally like, I literally go I'm like my, my part to support fitness. It is right. Yeah. I kind of like, that's how I, I, I totally justify it in my head. Really. It's I'm being lazy. Cause I don't want to go in and have to cancel. Cause canceling gyms sometimes is a headache, dude. They're, they always try and you close have to write you. a, a f- five page essay. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna have, yeah. Well, the why last is one it? made you like fax, and I'm like, who even owns a fax? They made you. Yeah, fax? I had to go to my parents. Bro, you have to, to go fax. A lot of times you go in person. They want to know why. It's like because I want to cancel. Yeah. I'm saying like, but gyms are funny like that, right? And I remember that, right? You have to. I remember when we used to do it. We'd be like, oh. Got to talk to the GM and then GM. Oh, yeah, you, know, you so, guys did that shit. Oh yeah, you make, you make it difficult for everybody. It's oh, so so yeah. bad. So I part of it's karma, right? So, anyways, the irony of this, I mean, well before COVID, I had stopped going to a, a handful of these gyms, you know, and I was I went on one of my kicks. I think I've talked about this too. Like every like I don't know six months or a year, I try and like recalibrate my expenses and like where am I like blowing money and should I be resp- more fiscally responsible and. You know, of course, the gym thing always comes up. Like, I really should go over there and cancel that. So <laughs> like a couple hundred bucks a month, and I'm just <laughs> literally lighting on fire. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, so literally, I go, I'm going to do this one day. I was on my way back from here. I'm heading home. I had some time, and I'm like, I, I went to all the gyms, right? So I went to the three gyms that I never use and, and canceled these memberships. Now, here's the fucking ironic part about this. Literally, two days later, I'm trying to get on my Netflix and my Spotify, and my ATM card that's attached to all of my accounts just expired. So you didn't so, have to. So it auto fucking. Oh, <laughs> you did it for no now reason. The well, I waited, after I waited you. a year, like literally like four years or whatever it is uh, to actually go and finally cancel these things. Oh, man. Two days later, now I'm back trying to set up my Netflix, my Spotify wow. on like auto. And I'm like, oh my God, I could have just not showed up to Dude. the, and the gym would have just you know, you brought some, off. You just brought Dang. something up interesting. Do you know that the fi- the gym industry, do you know, you know how there's a three day cancel? Policy. Remember, we sell memberships. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah. It's always three day cancellation. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys realize why? There was a lawsuit over that. California law. Yeah. Really, bro. The gym industry, when it first became a business, was so shady. It was so shady. They would sell people memberships knowing they're going to go out of business in like a month or two. <laughs> when like they knew thing. they were going out of business, yeah. people so paying slimy, monthly, dude. they would offer them a, like, this was a classic thing that they'd do. They'd wow. say, hey, for, I know you're paying 30 bucks a month. This is in the 1980s to say. They'd say, hey, for 200 bucks, you'll have a lifetime membership. You never have to pay again. Yeah. And they would get all kinds of people giving them 200 bucks. Then they'd show up next month, chains on the door. Can't they also it. had another They had another. So you can't sell. This is why you can't sell lifetime memberships anymore. There has to be a renewal fee. There all, so there also wow. was this other lawsuit that happened. I believe, I want to say, I should check this so I don't want to like shame a gym that's not true. I think it was in Shape City in the Valley. I think it was that. Oh, they had a great reputation. So, and what, what they were doing was they had like in your contract, if you cancel, there was like massive fees. Yeah. 
And so you would go to cancel, like say after six months, you're it's not only using it. dollars Yeah, it was like literally more than what the gym membership would cost you wow. for like the year. So then people would be like, what? And then, yeah. so they were doing that to so many people. And then the way they get away with it was like, oh, it's in the contract. Whoa. You know, you, you know, sign that if you cancel within X amount of time, you have all these crazy fees. And so they hustled so many people to just keep the contract, keep it going because one, the cancellation would cost more than paying bro, the year. One yeah. of the largest... Jim, this is actually brilliant, but also slimy. One of the largest gym chains from the East Coast, back they used to compete with 24 back in the day. I don't know if I should say their name. You guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They used Schmunch? to they used to sell no, not crunch. Okay. Not no, crunch. No, no. Okay. They used to sell gym memberships and they were all three year every membership was a three year membership. Okay. Now here's how you paid monthly. Ready for this? Let's say it cost you 900 bucks for three years. Yeah. And then you'd say, What I want to pay monthly. They had a separate company. That would finance your membership. It's no different than financing a car. There'd be an interest rate attached to your monthly payment. <laughs> and if you missed gym memberships, it would fuck with your credit and wow. all kinds of crazy shit. They yeah. actually did that. There's so actually, everything was it's, prepaid. It's smart and horrible. They made money yeah. on the financing. Yeah. So not only did you buy the membership, the, but you made money God, on the what financing. Are those, what are those companies called? There's a, those are uh, like where you could do, we could we could do that technically. Like if we had like our yes, you could hire a company. to Yeah, we could hire a company. Like let's say we we don't have a product that's like a thousand or two thousand dollars. We could hire a company that we that somebody can make payments on it, yep. but we get the money up front. That's right. And mm -hmm. then they and we we pay a, a little bit of interest that's on right. it, so they carry it. That, that's what, right. are, what are those called? I'm trying to f find it. Let's see here, a finance company. I don't know. But a I finance company. Yeah, yeah I, I remember know. people coming in. And so this is how. So twenty four fitness back then was Nautilus. It was. I don't know if it was the first, but it was definitely one of the first that did a month to month cancel whenever you want membership. And it was because of this, because people were like, it messed up my credit. It screwed up my whatever. I couldn't get a home loan because of this. So master wow. office, like month to month and you cancel whenever, which was brilliant back in the day. It was. Nobody brilliant. did that. Yeah, it was definitely. And, and getting it down to a price where people would be like, eh, it's like, people have no idea though. Back in those days, like that when, they, when the gym industry was taken off, it was so crazy. There were general managers. This is for other companies. I think it was Ray Wilson's Family Fitness, where they the way they got paid was they would get a budget, something like this, right? They would get a budget for the gym, and they they made whatever they saved. I love that. So literally, uh, that's like teaching you how to be a true operator. Oh, they, they were. Mm -hmm. So they, they literally general managers would have like like they would work the front desk. They would train people. They do you know they just bust their ass. And you had general managers. You're talking about in the '90s who were making quarter million dollars a year running yeah. a gym. Yeah, mm -hmm. because of it, and that's why so many even quit when the merger happened. So they were smart like, I'm not to do that. So crazy to not do that. I think. I know. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, that would incentivize me to do all that stuff. I would. I would I'm that guy for sure. That would yeah. be like, oh, I'll do. That. I'll do that. I'll take yeah. the trash out. All the all extra things. But you, you, you had a budget, stack it up. so I could spend money on advertising, or I could spend money here, or I could save money here, and do all that stuff. I think the reason why they stopped doing that is because they were attached to the gym that they were making money off of, and they would run it to a point where they were making you know quarter million dollars, and then to get them to move to another club or whatever, like, no, I'm staying Nobody here. else is going to be able to do it. Yeah, but yeah. you want that mobility. And right? I bet there was a lot of probably shady stuff happening too where you're just like, oh, I'll just not pay for that. I'll do that. Mm. Or like, there's probably things that like they want you to spend money on right. and do. And then you Let things doing... slide on some of the maintenance. That's like, unfortunate, yeah. right? There's probably, like usual, a few people that ruined it for everybody else because that would be a way that, I mean, I would love to do that. I mean, that's like the coolest, that's like the closest thing to it being your gym. You know totally. what I'm saying? Yeah. And then, but you have the backing of this big if, First company. off, if all of us bought a gym today, uh, none of us would want to run it. No. So it's too much work. It's just too mm -hmm. much work. But yeah. we would want it, right? If we put someone in charge that we trusted, we know lots of people, that's probably what we would do. We would probably tie them to the, we are to gonna, the budget. We are going to do that cool model. A hundred percent, we will eventually do a, you know, a, a, gym. Maps, a MAPS gym model out there. And it, what will happen though is when we, like, we're done, I feel like building yeah. everything with this, I think that that would be a fun project. It's yeah. not- Maybe a, then you'll let me start a supplement company. <laughs> I will actually. We'll have I will. it in the house. Care. So in the gym only. You know, I give all my ideas to everyone else. I, I was. I give my yeah. ideas. All of our partners, they get all my brilliant. I want, sorry, that's market I want testing, you to know dude. that Dr. Gabriel Lyon called me after that and actually thanked me for that conversation. She's like, "I want you. To, I want to know. Like, I just, I had no idea about supplements when Sal said that and you made that comment." Um, and I appreciate it. I 100 percent would have went that direction. And oh, had, to start a company? Yes. Yeah. Oh, and she's man. like, I had. I, I had, thought you were talking about the brilliant idea I gave her. No. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, I told her to start doing this, yeah. sell a supplement. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to no, say the it. reality of the margins. I'm well, no, that's what it was. It was when you told her to do supplements, yeah. and I said, "Don't margins you dare suck. do that." And then she was like, "What?" And I was like, "Yeah, no, absolutely not." Sal's been wanting to do it forever, and I'm like, "No way." I mean, that that's it's so funny too because in the space, um, 
you know, I don't know. There's something about um, when people hear uh, gross, like it's like, oh, I got a, I got yeah. a twenty million dollar company. That's like, all oh, they talk about, though. The people that, and yeah. so it's, but you're in the red. Yeah, it's like, would you rather have a twenty million gross company that profits ten to fifteen mar, fifteen percent margin, or a two million dollar company that gets eighty percent margin? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It's like think about the headaches. It's a no brainer. Yeah, exactly. And then you add in the fact too, something that's grossing that much. There's so many different moving parts. There's probably a lot more employees. By the way, you just threw out a number: ten to fifteen percent margin. That's a supplement company that's run that's very killing well killing yeah. yeah run very well yeah. so, i think it's also important to note that those are companies that have good products yeah, yeah. yes because yeah. you can have huge margins if you have garbage. well and that's that's the other well that's what i mean it's oh, run yeah. very well yeah. so that's if you point. so a 20 million dollar company will profit you two million dollars yeah. or two and a half million dollars yeah. right that's a lot of staff warehouse purchasing, you know, suppliers. And the management. more the more people, the more moving parts, too, the more headaches, just period. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I would even take, I would take uh, significantly less money. I would uh, significantly, I'd take quite a bit less money with, uh, you know, 90% less of the moving parts. Of course. Because you yeah. have to factor that in. Like at a certain point, yeah. Of of making millions of dollars, the difference between you less making stress, more profit. two million dollars yeah. or four million dollars, it's double you. But it's really plus like you guys your lifestyle I, isn't changing that yeah, much. Plus, you guys know I'd push the limits anyway. My supplement company would have would definitely, <laughs> but that it one would definitely the, push but the limits. You think of supplements and gym is like the two go to moves. I know. I know. You know, and, the, and then the third one, which the I was going to make money, idea, apparel. The, it, no, well, oh, actually, you're oh, right. yeah. the four most popular. You just made me list all the worst are like also. the worst businesses. That's crazy. Apparel. The, those are the ones I think they're going to kill it with. Gym yeah. and then uh and then membership training. The the 9.99 a month app. The app. Oh, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I'm saying? Oh, right, 9.99 right. like I'm going to get big as a trainer, I'm going to get famous yeah. and then I'm going to charge everybody 9.99 a month subscription yeah. model. Subscription yeah. model for mm. personal training. Which All is, terrible is ideas. Brutal. All terrible ideas. Yeah, it's a brutal yeah. model. Yeah, it's not it's not and and for some reason, and you know, it's, we always we we glom on. You know, to we've the, talked the nobody Netflix. out of it right now. <laughs> yeah, I think we just talk people into doing it. Well, yeah. I'm different. You know, yeah. yeah. Hey, if you hear what They're we're not saying, doing it the way I'm doing. If you it. hear what we're saying and you still want to do it, maybe maybe it is for you. I, I mean, know. there's we 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 uh, compare things to like the the Netflix model or yeah. the example. You know, there's a, a handful of companies that have proven that model to work, and they did it, and it's like, you know, it's just it's. I, okay, if, I guess if you really believe you're going to be the one in a hundred thousand that's going to make that happen, you are Neo. That. But yeah. there's a lot better. There's a lot better. It strategies. reminds me of like uh, what was that data? I think I brought it up on a previous episode. The <laughs> OnlyFans. Uh, the most, the average, the actually the large, l huge percent. I remember it was like ninety something percent of people on there make like less than fifty bucks a month. Yeah. You know, but they hear these stories of these girls. Meanwhile, so the many kids uh, get access to those. Pay, like their friends are going to see your yeah, pictures. Yeah, but you're posting naked, yeah, you know, yeah, weird yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. what was this stat? I know I've heard that stat too. I don't remember it's, exactly, but it was like the very, vast majority make very nothing, almost nothing. Yeah, it's a it's a really small percentage yeah. that are, are. I mean, think about that when you have that many that many girls that are competing on there. Like, you've got to be literally really really unique. Especially. Otherwise, even if someone like let's say are like, there dudes making money, I, I'd be curious. Have, of course, there. Well, I mean, Doug, like, look up highest paid. Male only. I want to see the difference, though. By know? the way, you guys want to bet? Do you think that his number one consumer is women or men? Men, of course. Yeah, yeah. No way. Yeah. There's no, yeah. Way, There's no way chicks are paying OnlyFans. No. No way. Why? Yeah. Why yeah, would yeah. they? Yeah. Because no. the, Dick is free. <laughs> they can get it anywhere. Yeah. The market's Dick flooded. Is, Dick has always been free. Uh, you know what I'm yeah, dude. So they're not. They they're just, not they paying for just that. Just going to ask for a really dumb girl if you're paying for that. Just going to say that. Just going to put it out there. By the way, the highest earning male in OnlyFans is hip hop artist and TV personality Tyga. Okay, oh, see, yeah, so yeah. what some of these, so not, every, famous. not everybody uses OnlyFans too for new, even right. though that's like 80% of the business. Yeah, it's yeah, not right. all of the business. Yeah, yeah. So you, a lot of people can use Doug, it just because top, they want to be. Look up top, is, top, 20, doing? top 20 male OnlyFans models. Let's try that. Okay. Because you're right, because if you're famous. Yeah, famous, I guess. Though. Yeah, people will pay to have access to Rock if he's doing right. things that That, that could just be just to, yeah, to see what he's up to in his yeah. lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not necessarily. What was Tyga's pay? Did he, did he say his income from it? Uh, yeah, seven point six nine million a month. A oh, month? Oh my! God, wow, dude. Mm. What? What's he doing? Uh, I know that's what I mean, I'm like. You sure he's not showing nudes? Yeah. Seven million a month he is making off of OnlyFans. Well, let me double check. I wonder that. if let me... it's like all of the. Bro, above. when I hear stuff like this, it just really highlights like this. Also, uh, why I don't think we're going to see this big crash and which just just the wealth gap is getting crazy. Yeah, yeah. seven point six nine million. Uh, wow, dude. Black that's China insane. has twenty million a month. Uh, she's a female, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Bella Thorne, eleven million. Wow. So Cardi B, nine point three million. Yeah. 
Hmm. So anyway, yeah. mainly women. Yeah. And I forget what the ratio. Andrew, you know what it is? I know you're a big OnlyFans guy. Is it like 80% the, the creator makes? <laughs> his wife. His wife's just destroy him. <laughs> I, don't know about this. I thought you he's said a, He's what? acting like he doesn't know. He's like, I have no idea. Actually. Stop. <laughs> Stop it. Is, that, yeah. is that on the internet, you guys? I, I, thought, you said, I thought you said OnlyFans was editing software. Yeah. That's what we're paying every month. 500 bucks a month. <laughs> we get everybody in trouble. Oh, yeah, my God. Least likely. I, who, who, who has got that, right? Who's there's some guy out there that it's coming on the credit card bill like that. And he's telling his wife it's software. <laughs> <laughs> so the creator keeps 80%. 80%. That's right. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So 80% is $7 million. Yeah. Doing okay. That's crazy. That's a lot of money. What if we did an OnlyFans? Yeah, no, I dudes. think we're missing the mark here, guys. We are. What would we do on an OnlyFans? What yeah, could we possibly yeah, do? Nothing. You have no talent. Nothing. You have no, <laughs> nothing to do. Yeah, you have no rear to I wear. can juggle. Yeah. So Maybe people would pay to see no, Justin play the guitar yeah, with, yeah. you know? <laughs> with what? With chaps on. Oh. Just not, yeah. yeah. <laughs> with with chaps? Yeah, with assless chaps. <laughs> he can he play <laughs> the guitar with no hands. The chaps guitar. We should try that, actually. Let's see if we can we can get some money out of that. A lot. I mean, we'll you, do a reverse only fans. I need it in the comments. Pay how money, many would you you pay, pay to money to make Justin stop? Okay, yeah. million. Oh, isn't that? that there I mean, we go. How, I mean, I wonder how many people maybe get to play do the somewhere. harmonica with my. How brother. many people make <laughs> uh, seven figures Gross. or more? Annually and only fans. I wonder what the, the the pool of people, how big the pool I for, is. There was a literally guess? a graph that showed what percentage made. I know uh, you're right about that. That's yeah, for sure. Yeah. But I mean, if there's uh, millions of people on there, that's still like tens of Remember thousands. Remember when they floated the idea they were going to stop like doing Yes, this? yes. They were trying there's, to go public, right? Yeah, that was why. I yeah. think, yeah, that was 300 such a plus make a million or more. Only 300, like 300 people. Yeah, oh, 16,000 plus creators earn 50,000 or more. Okay. Well, How many see, total? Uh, yeah, people? yeah, break that down. I want to hear those numbers again. So, three hundred plus creators, so around three hundred creators, make a, more than a million. That's nothing. A year. Okay, that's uh, not very many. Yeah, and sixteen thousand make over fifty thousand. So somewhere around fifty or above. Right. Okay. Okay. Yes. So okay. So that's not. I mean, that's that just shows you. Your highlights your point. Yeah. 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 So then not, and then how many total creators there. are there? That's a good question. Let me see. Yeah. Uh, how many there are. Yeah. Because, I mean, God, you know, well, only, only 300 are in that crazy number. So that, that number with Tyga is like, he's one of the 300. Yeah. Of most course. of them are famous people already. Yeah. So, okay. So hardly anybody's making Yeah. They have 187 million users. Oh. oh. So what's that? That's Let's, users, though. So I don't know what that means. Oh, uh, so uh, 2.1 million were content creators. So 2 million creators, 16,000 of which make 50,000 a year. Yeah. And 300 make a million. Yeah. So what are your odds of making? Not a, good. Nothing. Not yeah, what's what is uh sixteen thousand of? Plus, it ain't random. It's not like your odds are there because they're the numbers are there. Because of those three hundred people, they're all famous probably, yeah. mm -hmm. or can do something weird like what Justin said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet you're right. I bet the the three hundred <laughs> are all no already idea. famous people that are oh, just putting, their, putting their content on there. <laughs> so your chances, uh, it looks like about point zero 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 one five. Uh, Zero zero one five. No, yeah, zero, zero, point, zero. I think I think that works out to be point zero one five percent chance of making a million. Wow, of making a million. Yeah. So, what are your odds of getting the NFL? They might even be better than that. <laughs> yeah, that's actually I don't that's know. That's a, a good, good question. question. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you, we have to compare it to other things so people can understand how like ridiculous how it is. To well, to go well, what's, on what that. is winning the lottery? It's got to be a, that's got to be pretty close to winning the lottery. No, something like that. No, lottery is way it. worse, bro. Yeah, probably. Was way oh, yeah. You could, yeah, That's you could get struck by lightning while, you know, playing chess with a shark. And you, <laughs> yeah. the odds are higher of that than winning Yeah, the tens of millions buy lottery tickets, and sometimes there's not even a winner, yeah. right? I mean, but it, it's in that same category, I would say. I mean, I mean, obviously, lottery is way crazier, yeah. but I mean, it's up there in the, like, the, the 10. Hearts. But the difference is you buy a dollar ticket, you're... You know, your boobies aren't on the internet. Well, forever. that's the part I think that really sucks is how many yeah. people are trying to do that in hopes that they're going to do that. And then like, you'd never do, but yet you put all this stuff I out know. there. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, if I was guaranteed, right, that I was going to be one of those 300 or yeah. 16,000 or whatever the, the big ones, right? The 16,000. No, that's $50,000 a year. Oh, that's what, yeah. yeah fuck that. I wouldn't yeah, do it for yeah. that. For 50 grand? Yeah, no. It'd be needing to be in the millions What if for it's me an even, AI body? You know what I mean? Like you just construct it and you put it out there. Yeah, but, but you're it's not actually, even you. It's the, but what about your face though? It's still you. It's you. Well, let's say somebody does that anyways, like in the future. Yeah. Well, yeah. AI people are going to make OnlyFans. This is getting weird. <laughs> it's going to happen. You, you know guys. what else is this weird? Just took a left. You know what else is weird? You. The kid 
The three-year-old driving the Ferrari. Oh, the one that you were arguing with me about? How is that real? I do not. This is not. <laughs> well, bro. I'm not even going to look at it. It's not real. Who the hell lets a three-year-old drive <laughs> a, a, around a, a racetrack that fast? Bro, he's in it. That's dangerous. His Instagram is what crazy. Are they doing? What, is, what does his dad do? Is he like his a dad's famous a professional, driver? No, no. His dad is a professional race car driver. Yeah. Well, that's... The, I mean, I can see what he's doing. He's obviously... Bro, he's three years old. What do you do with the three-year-old? You're like, I know. It's crazy. Drive fast in a car? Yeah. What are you doing? He's three years old. He's three years old. That's so crazy. But I mean, he obviously dangerous. is showing he's skill. Good though, he's really yeah, good. I don't he's care. He he had the, him and his dad, yeah. and they're obviously they're filthy rich. You can see their house. Yeah, he's he's his dad is driving. It's a, a private track and the whole deal, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, no, right. no, I read about it. Oh yeah, so he's driving. He's driving an ATV. His dad is yeah. on two and wheels, on two wheels on the side like this, and his son's doing it on his little fifty. Same thing. Yeah, and they're just around in a circle. You know, I can't do that. I've been riding since I was a kid. That's crazy. Bro, did you ride a bike when you were three? I don't remember. Yeah. Don't remember. Let alone a fucking <laughs> ATV. Yeah, I know. This kid bro. has like. His dad has to make a custom car seat so he can reach the pedals of the Ferrari. It's in his DNA, dude. That's my son's age. That is wild. That's I know. That's, that's really crazy. Yeah. I think he's setting his kid up for failure, man. I think my that's son's just eating his boogers. I do, bro. What? Yeah. I do. You do? Yeah. What's he, what if the kid never becomes like the best race car? Like, you, 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 I don't know. I, I just think it's so dangerous. First off, oh, that's so interesting. That. We're so different here. Yeah. I would so do that. I would you, totally do that. If my son, because you got to think that. Bro, if he crashes, he's dead. Okay, so I, I always have Max around when I'm doing any of this. And I, really I, I had Max at a that, very though. young age. I would drive my truck, <laughs> and when I was parking it, he would stand and grab the steering wheel. And if I saw that he had this natural kind of ability to do it all on his How own. How do you do that, though, at three? How do you know that they have now? They can't even reach the pedals. I'm sure he's got video game simulators and things like that. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah he's, he's got some things. Crazy. So I'm like, sure Tony he shows Robinson those signs. And then that. I and then if I like my son would be terrified to get out on the like the, he has him on a wakeboard too, get, yeah. teach him how to how to surf. Max wouldn't even get in the water and even attempt that. So I would never force him to do it. But if he got up there and want, bro, I would have all about it. Yeah, I would man. so practice for hours with him. If he's showing that he's in, and obviously you can see the kids not tortured. He's enjoying what he's doing with his dad. He's got a big smile on his face and having all kinds of fun. So if my son was doing that. I would. Oh yes. Yes, I would. I would totally do what that. Would you and, do if you pull up to a stoplight? Yeah. You see a car, you're like, I'm going to race that car. <laughs> is, over. He's got a car seat. <laughs> it's a three-year-old. <laughs> literally in a car seat. I would think like this a little is a sippy cup. <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, this is an adult with a really strange condition. There's a video of him. There's a video of him. He's in one of those TRX, you know, uh, ATVs, you yeah. know, those, those yeah. little TRX ones. Uh -huh. And he's pulling a little mini size, like custom made boat. And he, he's trailering it and he That's drives it. Hilarious. He backs it in. Okay. Wow. First of all, you know how hard it is to back yeah, to, a full, to put it down into the, so the smaller a, a vehicle that. is, Okay, and the smaller Loading a trailer up. is, the more difficult it is to back up straight. So okay. if you've ever driven like a, an ATV and like like a trailer, a small trailer behind you, it takes a lot of skill to keep that straight sure. because it does just a little bit of play and it'll yeah, shoot the trailer. So this kid literally backs up a, a small trailer like that, which is already hard, gets the boat in, climbs in his boat, takes his boat off, and he's driving the boat. He's drinking the sippy cup. <laughs> he's driving. Hilarious, That's dude. Crazy. Spe hey, speaking Unreal. of real, I just read an article where these two kids, they weren't nearly this young, but a 10 and an 11-year-old got mad at their mom because she took away their devices, their electronics. So they were pulled over on the freeway. They had already driven 200 miles. They were driving to California, run away from mom. <laughs> they were A 10 and 11 year old? 10 and 11 year old. Got pulled over. They'd already gone 200 miles Whoa. away from mom. What? Because she took away their electronics. What? You want to talk about, first of all, epic story for the rest of your life. Yeah. Remember that time I ran away and I drove 200 miles? Yeah. But they, yeah, cop pulled them over. Wow, like, ten year old. I feel like some kids have that idea, but they would never actually execute. Oh, you know, wow. like that's insane. Did I tell you guys when I tried to run away once? My my parents. Did I ever tell you that? I was a little. I was a smart ass as a kid. How I, old were you? That's hard to believe. Uh, I was probably mm. four. What? And I was like arguing with my parents, and yeah. I'm like, I'm gonna run away. I remember I said something. Did like Did you that. make one of those little hobo sacks? So hey, so mm. I'm like, I'm gonna run away, and so my mom's like, I'm gonna call your you know, your bluff, right? She's like, okay, you know, I'll help you pack. So I'm like, okay. So now it's like, who's gonna win? <laughs> So she gave me a little suitcase uh -huh. and I put toys in there and shit, <laughs> closed it up and went to the front door and my mom opened the front. My dad was there too. And they're like, all right, see you later, buddy. They opened the front door and then I walked out and they closed the front door and then they looked through the peephole, right? And I, I <laughs> my parents love telling the story. I stood there 
for like 10 minutes just to stay in the front door. I was probably thinking to myself like, fuck, what do I do now? Yeah, like, where do I go? <laughs> yeah. So then I turned around, rang the doorbell again. My mom answered the door. She's like, oh, oh, what is it? And I'm like, I forgot my jacket. <laughs> <laughs> I did the same like, thing. You can't leave without my jacket. Yeah. I did the same thing, but I was like, I would say I was more like eight, eight or nine. And what I did was I said the same thing. And my parents, very similar. I was like, go ahead. And we lived out in the country and we had one of these uh, flat, flat roofs. It was actually like a, a mobile home that they we built that, that someone built custom house or attached and around it and so it was like this shitty flat roof and you could if you went around the back you could climb up on it so me running away was climbing up on the roof yeah and i made it all up. yeah i made it all the way till dinner you know and then i got really hungry I started thinking about like how am i gonna eat you know what I'm like, i gotta come back to the house. It's all the logistics yeah, yeah. that's, I'm the, that's the hard part away. i'm never coming back home and there's like oh my stomach i'm so hungry right now like, <laughs> you imagine, you, get imagine you have a kid that's hard-headed and it's like oh i'm actually gonna leave and you're like all right we're gonna play we're gonna like scale this up like you dress up as a robber scare him ah, <laughs> ah someone tried to get me yeah that's what happens out there you know uh, hey let's shut that kid out what's his, what's his handle doug yeah zane's Ofuoglu. It's Z A Y N S O F U O G L U. That must be. It's got to be his name. That's weird. Check this kid out. Yeah. This kid's amazing. Yeah. Sleep is one of the most important factors when it comes to your health, including your ability to build muscle and burn body fat. Well, there's a company called Eight Sleep that has the most advanced and impactful sleep system you'll find anywhere in the world. Literally, it goes on your bed and it controls the temperature of your bed and it tracks your sleep to maximize your sleep literally individualizes the temperature in your bed and the conditions of your bed to help encourage better sleep. There's nothing on the market like this company. It is literally a game changer. Raise your growth hormone levels, help optimize testosterone, maximize recovery, build more muscle, burn more body fat, have less cravings. Those are all the result of better sleep. Go check them out. By the way, they ship all over the world, including Canada, the UK, some countries in Europe, and even Australia, and of course, all over America. Go check them out. Go to 8sleep.com forward slash mind pump, and on that link, you'll save $150 off. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Chris from Missouri. Chris, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Yo, what is up, guys? This is wild. Did not expect to start my morning like this, so... <laughs> What's Very happening? cool. You didn't have an appointment to call? <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, uh... My main question is in regards to MAPS Anabolic. Sal, I've heard you say in the past that in regards to trigger sessions, your kind of inspiration behind that was noticing people that work like physical labor jobs, such as mailman, having developed calves or mechanics with the forearms. So that was kind of your inspiration for incorporating trigger sessions. So my question was, if you already work a job that's hyper-physical like that, are trigger sessions necessary or is the day-to-day -day activity of the job actually kind of taking the place of those? That was a good question. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a really good question. So here's the other thing that I noticed. What's about, your job there real quick? Yeah, what, what, do, you what do you do? do? Um, I am a truck driver, delivery driver specifically. So we'll do like food delivery to restaurants. So on a given day, I'll have between 500 to 700 boxes on my truck in various weights from like 10 pounds to up to 70, 80 pounds. All, every box on the truck is unloaded by hand, throw it on a dolly, up and down a ramp, into the store, back to the trailer okay. until it's empty. So Yeah. Okay. Right. So how long have you been doing that? Uh, two years at this specific job, but I've been in this industry for probably like six years between doing this. Uh, I worked for a beverage before that, FedEx. So yeah. a lot of physical stuff. Chris, do you remember how you felt uh, the the day of after work and the day after work when you first started? I would say maybe the first six months to a year. Do you remember how your body felt? The main thing I remember specifically is like sore joints, like elbows, knee pain, stuff like that, acclimating to it. But now on a day-to-day -day basis, I don't really notice it. That's That's the point. So... You're still sending uh, somewhat of a low-level signal. Um, I noticed that for someone your size, your biceps seem to be pretty well-developed. That's probably from uh, loading and carrying boxes, okay? Trigger sessions provide a low-level muscle-building signal, but they don't compare to traditional strength training. Really what they do is they kind of turbocharge or add a little extra. Now, for someone like yourself, uh, here's what ends up happening. Use the right word, acclimate. You know, I noticed with blue collar workers that they, after doing it for years and years and years, it becomes 
just their, their day to day. They're no longer sore. They don't hurt. Whereas if I go and try and help somebody, if I go with some movers, for example, and help them move a house, people have been doing this for 10 years. Uh, I'm going to be really sore after helping them work and they feel like nothing because their bodies are totally acclimated. So adding additional trigger sessions to your MAPS anabolic routine probably is going to still have some benefit because your body's so acclimated and adapted to what you do. That being said, there's some other things that we want to consider that I think are more important because you have a physical job. Even though your body does acclimate, you're still under a little more stress than the average person in terms of your physical stress. Yeah, how's your rest and recovery? Now, there's there's a, I mean, of course, stress encompasses a lot of different things. So, you know, somebody could be very stressed out uh, because of life circumstance that can weigh their body down more than, let's say, moving boxes, <laughs> for example. But all things considered, always consider the amount of activity you do, recovery, how you feel, if adding trigger sessions or doing too many days of strength training starts to make you feel like too sore, tired, you start to notice your strength gains aren't coming or maybe even going backwards, you're just doing too much. That would be mm -hmm. the main thing to consider. But someone like you who's been doing it for so long, um, I mean, you can, your body's used to it. It's not really, I mean, it's definitely work still. But it's not stressing your body at all, nowhere near like it was when you first started. I think the way I, that I would make this decision on would I do trigger sessions or not would actually be more on the aesthetic side, right? I think that you, ha you have enough stress, you have enough activity, you're moving the body around, so you're going to facilitate and speed up recovery. So that's all good. Blood flow, oxygen, getting the muscles, nutrients, it's just going to help that because you're moving around so much. So you're getting the benefits from that than the average person wouldn't get because they're sitting maybe at a desk job. So the only other thing that would make me go, hey, should I add in trigger sessions is if I had like specific areas that I'd want to target. So let's say you're you're carrying boxes. So you are probably getting a lot of like bicep and forearm and maybe even a little bit of shoulder stuff. But, you know, maybe my back is a little underdeveloped mm -hmm. or, you know, maybe my chest, you know, so I might do trigger sessions that are just focused on chest flies and, and back rows. Yeah. You know, you got a lot of leg, you're moving up and down with legs. So maybe your legs aren't really underdeveloped, but if they are, then maybe that's, so I would look at specific body parts that you care about that you would want. And then that would be the only thing I'm probably triggering uh, throughout the day because you are, yeah, sense. you are yeah. getting enough activity that you're, you don't necessarily have to do it, but you still, to Sal's point, you would still see benefit from incorporating them, especially in areas that you want to develop. That was, yeah, that was exactly the direction I was thinking, uh, but mainly from a corrective perspective of you continuously kind of reaching in front and having a lot of um, uh, positional, um, postural kind of positions where, you know, to counter that with, with rows and with, you know, lat pull downs and get like more posterior chain kind of focused exercises to kind of help complement uh, what you're doing every day, uh, just on a low level intensity. Um, so you get that kind of volume to, to sort of balance and equate. Uh, but yeah, you do, you definitely have to, because you're already so physically active, I would definitely monitor that in terms of how it's, it's overstressing you or you're finding that kind of sweet spot, how to compliment it. Yeah. The point that Justin's making reminds me of like all the hairdressers or engineers, com uh, you know, computer tech people that I would, I would train. They're so rounded forward all day long. Like, so I wouldn't do any trigger stuff on their, their delts or their pecs or anything like that because they're already, I would have them do yeah, like band, delts, yeah, like, band pull aparts yeah. and rows to complement all this activity on the forward. Face so pulls, there yeah. is some definitely value to address that. So those are kind of the, I guess that would be the two things I would be, look at if I'm you is I'm going, okay, is there things I can do <clears throat> to address, you know, postural imbalances because what I do all day that I could do is my trigger sessions or are there muscles that I want to bring up and develop more? I'm going to focus on those two main areas. That's how I'm going to develop my trigger yeah. sessions. Chris, just for fun, if you wouldn't mind, if you could just stand up and go sideways so I can look at the side profile of your arm because I want to point something out. Okay, now, now, yeah, so, yeah, okay, good. Now, stand facing forward and flex your bicep for a second. I want to look at something here. This is getting weird. No, it's not. Go, no, up here like this. Out here like this. Bring, now yeah. take your shirt okay. off. And so what you're going to notice, go ahead and put your arm down. What you'll notice is, so for the Quick average... circle. Quick circle. Any speedos. Yeah, yeah, no. So for the, for the average guy, so typically the tricep is about two-thirds of the size of the upper arm. Now no, you notice got, in your arm, he's got good bicep it's about one-to-one -one or maybe even bicep overpowers a little bit. Also, when you're standing and moving around, you can, for the average person, I don't think this is disproportionate. I think this is the way an arm is supposed to look. But compared to the average person, your forearms are really large compared to your upper arms. So biceps and forearms, 
that's a direct result of you yeah. moving boxes a hundred percent. You'll you almost, you'll almost never see a bicep overpower a tricep on an individual, except for maybe a gymnast or people who carry a lot of things like boxes and stuff like that. So that's a direct result of, of the work that you're doing now, you know, to back to what they were saying. I mean, you could, if you want from an aesthetic standpoint, you could do more tricep work, more maybe mid back work, you know, areas that maybe not working so much. And then to what Justin was saying, if you do notice certain nagging injuries from the work you do, correctional type exercises would be great trigger sessions. Yeah, do you have I did want to point out just the the development you've already got from the work that you do. And, I, and in fact, if I didn't know you and I were to look at you and kind of guess what kind of work you did or or if you did physical work, mm -hmm. I would guess you did something where you were a reflection carrying things. Sure. Yeah. Do you uh do you have um uh, Maps Prime Pro? I do not. I got the summer bundle with like aesthetic uh hit um, symmetry and then anabolic. So you're set there. I think those are all great programs to have. I think, uh, prime pro for some of the points that Justin was making. Yeah. So if you start to notice shoulder nagging or elbow stuff that you mentioned before, anything like that, using the, the movements that are in there, like trigger sessions would be very valuable to you. So, totally. yep. so okay. we're going to send that over to you. So you have that. I think you've got the right programs oh, thank you. Thank for, you. for lifting and stuff. Um, but you can use that as like a great reference tool if you have any sort of any of those issues. But really what we talked about, the two main things, yep. uh, is what I would focus on if I'm you with my trigger sessions. Totally. Okay. So a quick question in regards, like, so I have aesthetic <clears throat> would, would your recommendation be to kind of treat my trigger sessions similar to those off days on aesthetic? I don't remember the term for them, focus. but target those weekend body yeah. parts. Yeah, yes, you can, yes, or yes. you could do them trigger session style. So lower intensity with yeah, bands yeah. three times a day. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. No, I love the idea of your focus sessions. Like I would, if I, knowing you already from what we've talked, like it, I wouldn't be doing biceps and probably like my front of my delts is like focus. I might do like rear delts and triceps as yeah. my main foot. Right. Maybe or, upper mid back. Yeah. Or something like yeah. That. yeah. I would pick like stuff like that. Probably That's, core just to stabilize, help yeah. you stabilize with, yeah. with your work. Those are all good, good suggestions. Awesome. I appreciate it, guys. You got it, man. All right, Chris. Thanks for calling in. Thank you. You got it. Yeah, isn't that funny, though? You could see, like, oh, yeah. rarely do you see a <laughs> tricep and bicep one-to-one uh, -one or even, you know, larger bicep, but you'll see that with people like that. And then even blue collar, pay attention if you have a family member <laughs> mm -hmm. who swings a hammer all the time, look at the size of their hands and forearms yeah, in the comparison muscle development there. to their upper arms. I've seen so many carpenters with like almost skinny looking upper arms, wiry, right? And then this like massive forearm. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> like they, Popeye arms. Yeah. 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 yeah totally. That's super cool. And construction. Yeah. I, I mean, that was like my stepdad. My stepdad's forearms were oh, the yeah. size of his upper arm. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's from swinging Mechanics, a hammer. Mechanics. Yep. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You know, it's funny though. Someone like that, I bet he doesn't feel that way. He sees himself every day. It's like low level. He's seen sure. over, over you. So you don't look at yourself and go like, oh, I got great biceps. He probably thinks that it's not that way. It's obvious. It takes another person from yeah. the outside yeah. looking in to go like, I can tell by your structure, the development in your biceps mm -hmm. is is more than- well, it Just working on his triceps, his arms are going to look huge. You yes. Know, would be in, in comparison to that. Yeah. But, when I first started uh, dating Jessica years ago, she was at that time very into climbing the silks. And so, I mean, she was really, I mean, she could pull herself up with just her hands. You and she had a bicep that overpowered her tricep. Her arm, you know, had that look to it. And now her, obviously it's more balanced out because she's she's trained on balancing it. But you rarely see that, right? Triceps typically overpower the rest of the arm. It's like two thirds of the size of the arm. And that's kind of a telltale, like, oh, you carry things for a living. Yeah, yeah if that's he, where it comes from. If it was me, I in seeing his physique already, and he, if he's running, oh, I'd uh, go chest, triceps. I would do literally triceps, rear delts. That's it. Yeah. yeah, that would be like triceps and rear delts is going to address a little bit of the posture stuff. It's going to build his his It'll shoulders up more. Symmetrical, yeah. Yes, his his it'll bring his physique really, really together. If he cares about that, if that's something he cares about, those are the two like muscle groups I would pretty much mm -hmm. focus on on focus days and or trigger. Our next caller is Justin from Texas. Hey, what's up, man? How can we help you? Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, thank you for taking the call. Really appreciate it. Um, before I get into my question, Adam, uh, I just wanted to point out, hey, don't let these guys clown you, all right? There's nothing wrong with getting up three or four times in the middle of the night, sitting down on the toilet and peeing, all right? I like to fall. You I got another sitter. Uh, my guy. But you know what? Your wife probably loves you too, bro. That's oh, she does, man. A yeah. mess. Yeah, yeah. That's the that's the <laughs> difference between guys like you and I. That their wives don't even like it's, them. Dude. It's, well, I, I can they're, see they're, how they're only with them for the money. I can see how it's convenient because Adam yeah. sleeps in a nightgown. I have accuracy. So it's, it's really so. easy to pull up the nightgown. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> guys, 
throwing that out there, guys. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> yeah. You got it. Okay, we'll, what, what you got? We'll for take us, your Justin? man card. What, what else you got? <laughs> yeah. uh, so my question. Um, so a little backstory, real quick, before I really get into the question. So um, growing up in high school and whatnot, um, I was kind of a heavy set kid. I uh, wasn't into fitness or anything like that. Um, it wasn't until I was around 20 years old. Uh, never saw myself doing anything physical. Uh, the job I wanted to do uh, involved physical activity. I had to lose a lot of weight. I was 230 pounds, uh, five foot eight back then, at uh, 20 years old, uh, sub 35 percent BMI or whatever. Um, so I ran, lost a lot of weight in about a four month period. Um, got down to like 165. Um, started doing this job. Got into weightlifting. Um, bulked up to about 185 or so, wasn't really paying attention to diet or anything. Um, so fitness has been a part of my life now since, you know, I was 20 now, uh, I've been lifting. Um, I kind of considered myself, uh, kind of, I guess, bodybuilder style. Like I didn't care about strength as far as like, I didn't want to be able to bench 300 pounds. I just wanted to look like I could, you know? Um, so I never really cared about that. Didn't really pay attention to diet or anything. Flash forward um covid right like many of us happened uh things changed a little bit um i was still working out pretty consistently during that time uh, but i wasn't paying as much attention to diet and as you get older i'm 35 now right so it kind of seeks up on you um social drinking turned into more well i'm not socially going out anymore so it turned into more uh less you know, social drinking yeah. by myself <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm like <laughs> and uh, you, yeah, so after a couple of years of that, it kind of snuck up on me. It wasn't until um, probably uh, six months ago or so where I was like, all right, I need to kind of get this under control. Um, discovered you guys. I thought I had a pretty good understanding of working out. Uh, you guys completely changed my outlook on that as far as pursuing strength goals and um, progressive overload. Um, so since then, so, um, I had a metabolic testing done, uh, a few months back, they had me at around 2,700 calories for maintenance. Um, I was found myself eating around 2,300 calories. So I slowly worked my way up going through anabolic. Um, I got up to, I think by the time I ended anabolic, I was at around 2,600 calories, went into performance, got up to 3000 calories. Um, but notice my waistline was starting to grow. Um, during that time also I had, uh, we do the bod pod. Um, so I had my body fat percentage check. So just to update, I'm five foot eight. I'm about 230 pounds or it was 220 pounds when I did this bod pad and they had me at 33% body fat. Um, so I guess my, my main question is, um, so taking diet and stuff into control. So uh, I completely cut alcohol out of my diet over the last couple months, uh, which was more challenging than I care to admit. Um, and uh, so since then, uh, I'm paying attention to my diet. I've been my lifts have gone up exponentially. I guess I'm just curious, um, how far should I keep pushing the calories and stuff and pursuing these strength goals before I start taking body fat things into account as far as like cutting like doing mini cuts or whatever. Let's, um, let's, let's address that uh, first. Yeah, it's, go you know, I got to address your, I don't think you're 30% body fat. That doesn't seem right yeah, at all. That doesn't sound right. No. Can you stand up for me? I know I'm doing this again, but <laughs> so, so Sal's making everybody our last caller. No, yeah. uh, I don't think you're 30%. Yeah. You look like you're, you might be in the twenties, but you ain't 30%. No. That's strange. Um, anyway. Okay. So how, okay. how long should you go on this kind of reverse? Uh, typically what we say is you want to get to a point where you feel like you can cut from. Okay. So you say, so get Meaning up to a it's point. hard to eat more food. Yeah. We're like, okay, I think I could cut 500 calories or 800 calories. And I think I could sustain that. That's where you typically want to get. Um, I, I, I have a couple questions sure. though, before you give where, where do you think you're at steps wise? Have you tracked like your, I'm curious what your movement throughout the day looks like. Do you have a sedentary job? Are you active? Uh, no, so I'm, I'm, it's a mix between sedent. So I, I, I teach. So I, when I'm teaching, I'm very engaged in moving around. Um, I, I purposely get at least 10,000 steps a day, but okay. on average, especially on days when I'm teaching, which is at least four to five days a week, I'm averaging around 16,000 steps. Oh, wow. total, okay. And that's without even. Okay. Thing. So that, so that gives me a little bit more information. So based off of that, your size, your lifting, I actually would want you definitely to get up your, your calories to a higher point before we cut. That's a that's a good amount of movement. You're a good size dude. We should be at least getting up to like 3,500 calories before we come back the other direction. So that's a good generic number, but really the 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 
way to look at it is how you feel, right? Like what Sal was kind of alluding to, which is let's keep trying to build strength, build your metabolism up, add calories till you get to a place where you're kind of like, man, this is, this is a lot of food. This is, I don't even like eating this much food. Now that's a natural time to come back the other direction. Um, so I, I, oh, or you could also interrupt these, you know, reverse dieting with mini cuts. So let's say you've been slowly creeping the calories up and you've been doing that for the last say two months and you haven't, even though you're not to 3,500 calories yet, you haven't interrupted it with like a, a week or two week cut and do that for a week or two and then go right back to trying to get back up again. And just kind of playing that game is every four to six weeks interrupt with like a two week cut, then go four to six weeks and then cut and just kind of keep doing that until you've reached a place where you're eating probably 3,500 calories or so, or reach a place where you're like, that's a lot of food. Now I want to go the other direction. And along the way, if we do this correctly, you should actually be able to slowly increase calories and feel like you're leaning out a little bit because you're interrupting with his cuts. That would be my prediction if we did this right. That's that's exactly how I would do it. I mean, if you haven't done like a, a, a cut or a shortcut <clears throat> In a little while, I think that's a good idea um, to do something like that. And so what, what Adam's essentially telling you to do is a stepladder kind of approach where you bump calories, maintain for a little bit, drop down for a bit, and then do it again. Bump, maintain for a bit. I like I like a, a two to one or three to one ratio of, bull, of, of slow reverse to cut. So, you know, you could do four weeks, six weeks, and then like a week or two, two weeks of a, of a mini cut. And a mini cut is literally a few hundred calories below maintenance. You don't need to do anything more than that. And I think that would be the best strategy at this point. So if I get it up to like, say 3,300 calories and my maintenance is like 27. So if I'm bulking and I get up to 33, when I go to do my mini cut, just dropping down to like 25. Your maintenance, if you're at 3,300 calories, that would be your and you're not gaining any weight. That's your maintenance. So you let's say you're at 3,300 and you're doing it for three, four weeks and the weight is not changing on the scale. That's your new maintenance. That, yeah, remember that your maintenance is, is changes all the time. Yeah, and you only need to go like so when you're in a quote unquote bulk. And and by the way, I think you I don't I think you said that you got that number from like the bod pod or one of those things. Like I care more about you tracking consistently than I give a shit about those machines because those things are fucking never really that accurate. It's real. They're a good place to start and give you an idea like oh okay so I should be around twenty seven or twenty hundred calories. That's fine. The real thing I want to see is what calories can you eat and not gain or lose weight. That's and and it should be somewhere around that numbers between 26 and 3000 based off of where you're at. So I'd want to find that first. And then a bulk for you is only reversing 250 to 500 calories at most higher than that. And then a cut would be 250 to 500 below that. And that's kind of how you would toggle between them. When you're, when you're one, when you're in a bulk, you're 250 to 500 above when you're in a cut, you're 250 to 500 below and you're just kind of doing that ladder approach like Sal saying. And I love the like uh, like six weeks, then two, six weeks, then two, and you kind of go that way. But four and one is fine also. Okay. And then as far as training, so I'm like at the – this is like my second time running through anabolic. I'm at the end of – I'm about to finish phase three right now, the last week. And then I was planning on jumping into powerlifting after that. I like and that. And then maybe – after that. Or maybe uh, symmetry to interrupt one of those. I like all those cho choices. Um, you did say you've ran performance, so you've addressed some mobility stuff. I would consider doing uh symmetry to go. Like I love power lift next and then maybe symmetry after that to interrupt it, then go to aesthetic. I think that would be a, a good choice. What do you think, Justin? Yeah, I think symmetry yeah, after um, a power lift. Would be do you great. have symmetry? I, I don't have symmetry. Uh, symmetry. Um, uh, I, that's why I was going to go into aesthetic after that. Cause I got the maps. Well, we'll send, um, we'll send you symmetry. So we'll send symmetry on us. Mm -hmm. Um, but I like the idea of the power lift, staying focused on the building strength yeah. right, while yeah, you're in you this Because you just went through mobility and I'm sure you got some value out of that and, you know, getting back to just ramping up your, your, your force output, I think is going to do you a lot of good for m building muscle. Yeah. To, to me, I love, I love anabolic and power lift when I'm trying to like build the, a metabolism with a client, yep. just a really, those are really good strength-based programs. And that's a great place to be mentally when you're trying to reverse diet. So I love that strategy. And then after that, I like the idea of running like a symmetry between aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will say, so performance, uh, it wasn't my favorite. Uh, <laughs> I need to do more of it, right? But I will say after doing performance, I kind of got through that. And then when I started anabolic again, phase one, 
I we talked. I heard you guys talk about this before, but there's some days you go into the gym and I threw the weight on to deadlift and I was like, oh, more, oh, yeah. more. And I added like almost damn near 50 pounds. Wow. So I mean, just a brief break. So that's awesome. Don't sleep performance uh, for the listeners. Yeah. Hey, out there. Hey, keep that in mind. Since you have the self-awareness yeah. to know that about yourself, like that's I'm like you. I mean, it sounds like we have some things in common where uh, that's not my style of lifting, but that I'm always like aware of like, okay, I've been away from so that for a while. Though, yeah. Make sure you cycle back there. You know, at least once a year, you're getting back into a program like that because it will always benefit you. I appreciate that. One last thing before I, before I go, I just, uh, I appreciate your guys' content and I know you guys are always trying to push out like ways of correlating information and how fitness is a journey. So something that was taught to me back when I first got into the field that I work in, a uh, mentor explained to me once, he's like, going to school and stuff, you kind of learn that there's an alphabet. And then if you, these alphabets make sounds and you can put these letters together to create words and you can put words together to create sentences, right? And then as you go on through your journey and you start learning more, you realize like, oh, I can put sentences together to create a thought and paragraphs. And then as I learn more, I can create an entire book worth of knowledge. And I know that was something that always stuck to me as I've gone through my career. And uh, sounds like you guys kind of uh, fitness. I never really gave much credit to uh, being something like that. But definitely the more I've learned, the more I've uh I realize that that tends to be the case. So uh, yeah. appreciate what you guys do up there. Oh, great analogy. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, love, Justin. Love like Justin. It. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Take it, it easy. easy. All us Justins with the analogies. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 This is better than mine. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Uh, um, sometimes those those body fat readings are so weird, you yeah. know, or like a 40% body. Like In both directions, that. too. Like, I, I've never been able to wrap my brain around why Katrina always tests abnormally, weirdly low. Like mm. so low, always. Like I've, she's always tested. I've told you guys this, like ten to twelve percent body fat, and I've done like every method with her, hmm. and, and like and, and controlled all these. So just sometimes they're just for some well, people. The, the, the calculations. I don't know. So I think underwater weighing might be different, but the calculations. I mean, I've done that too with her. I know it's weird. That's why it's. I'm, I'm like the calculations on calipers, for example, are based off of cadavers, so oh, yeah. they know what what a general body fat percentage is on a human whose bicep, tricep, subscapula. So they can actually scoop it and out super and like weigh it. They literally, re they literally remove the fat yes. from the cadaver. Well, that's yeah. what they say. The, that's the most accurate way is to do that, right? But well, you're not yeah, gonna, that's the only way you can do <laughs> Plus, it. remember what Dr. Gabriel Lyon told us. Is the that, quality. Yeah, of the quality of muscle. The you know, the, muscle not the even biggest measured. takeaway from something like that to me, though, is like this is why the number doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if it is 35. What matters is... Did he go from 35 down to 30 now? Yeah. Or did he go Have from 30? A, a downward trend. Yeah. It li it really, it does not matter. People get hung up so much on what these machines and things are yeah. telling them. And everybody wants to argue with it. Like they're very, very valuable tools. So I think that's a, the thing is you don't just throw them out because it's, it's inaccurate to you because what they are good is measuring the difference of change based off of the, the variables. Of the change. And that's how you use that 100%. stuff. Our next caller is Aaron from Texas. Aaron, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Oh, guys, I appreciate it. Um, well, first, you've already helped me a whole bunch. Um, I mean, pretty much saved my life almost. Um, so growing up, I've um, been playing sports since I was two. Um, baseball, basketball, football, tennis, pretty much. I mean, just nonstop outside. Um, but since then, the one thing that was kind of never, I guess, relayed to me was the importance of strength training and um kind of just like having muscle to do stuff. Um, and so over time, it's gotten me super bad imbalances between my um, right and left side. I'm right side dominant. Um, I was a pitcher in baseball, so super forward shoulders. Um, but my imbalances got so bad that my left side, um, my jaw would lock. I couldn't open my mouth for probably more than an inch at times. I'd have to like like push the bottom of my jaw to, just to be able to open it to eat food at, at some points. Um, never really like used my left side um, for anything. So I didn't have like too much mobility. So I go from right side, I feel like is super forward, left side, kind of nothing. Um, my, I guess, obliques, um, right side, you can kind of feel I have, you know, muscle definition. Left side is like super squishy. Um, it doesn't help that I clean pools now. So I've been cleaning pools for about three years. Um, that probably doesn't help it. But I've also lost, um, so I lost over a hundred pounds 
from, um, I got really sedimentary. I worked at a Jimmy John's for about nine years and kind of slowly gained weight, gained weight. I was always the person who I could eat a lot, but I didn't ever really feel like I would gain weight, you know, until I was actually like not moving. And then it hit me. Um, I still play competitive softball. And so I would just constantly be getting hurt, be getting hurt. It's my lower back, mainly um, lower left side. And until I actually been listening to you guys for about a year now, and I actually like it, I don't know, clicked to the, like, maybe I should start working out, like actually hitting everything. Um, I feel like my CNS is never everything I do. I feel like I just couldn't get the form, like, you know, at the beginning to go through and really connect everything. Um, so I would slightly work out and then I'd take some time off, slightly work out, take some time off. Um, until actually just recently, um, I actually started to, I went through anabolic, um, kind of ran it through almost all the way through, but it was super lightweight because, you know, like I said, left and right side. And when I would do dead hangs, um, I'd hang for a bit and I'd kind of get to just opening everything up. I'd kind of do some twist. I'd do some like, you know, flopping, just kind of loosening everything up. And when I'd come down, my left side just it's opened up but man there would be so much like pain to just try to stand up like I'd want to like I don't know fall down so for the longest time I feel like everything was so closed in until I've really started to put an emphasis on you know getting my shoulders open opening my chest when I do everything and that's helped a whole bunch I think that's helped with a lot of my I've had constant sinus issues since I was little just feels like nothing could drain and my head has always had so much pressure. Um, so now that I've started to kind of move in this, um, you know, I kind of more so know what to do, but it's kind of the, um, where to go now. Um, I was wondering about symmetry, but actually just, um, the last day of the sale, I purchased it. Um, and I, I did, I think one day of it just to see kind of how it was, but I guess, the main question is, is I'm trying to figure out, um, bands, I guess, bands, suspension or symmetry. Um, I feel like for me to get started would be the way to go just to try to help get my CNS and everything kind of more together to then be able to go and, and, you know, lift, be able to lift heavier weights, I guess, without hurting yeah. is where I'm trying to get at. Aaron, you're going to live in map symmetry and the, not the last for, phase for like a year yeah. and, I would, and <laughs> yeah. skip the last phase. Yeah, I, yeah. I figured. Okay. So literally follow map symmetry, follow all the phases except for the last one and cycle through it and cycle through it. And it's going to be at least a year, at least <clears throat> of that kind of training yeah. uh, for you to balance yourself out. I mean, this I, is, we're talking about years and years yeah, and years and years. A lot so, you got to unpack. So, yeah. So I've been going, um, before I started listening to you guys, I have a really um, bad habit, but I think for me, it's a super good habit. Um, a whole bunch throughout the day, I'm constantly, like I would sit in my truck, so I'm, I'm in my truck working right now, but sit here and push, try to like, you know, get everything straightened, push, but also have my shoulders back. I used to not be able to do it with my left side. It would, I, so I can feel, I want to say I have um, a wing scapula on my left side, um, because I can get it to, I guess, click back in and I'll do this like at home, everything I'll, you know, get everything posture, right. Shoulders back. And I'll do like, you know, these just to open everything up and I'll go through and like get like the clipping, not, I guess not clipping. That's not the right word, but it feels like it's kind of going back into place. And so I'll do that and kind of do some isometric holds. And mm -hmm. so I think that has already helped a whole bunch. I've been doing that for probably about a year year and a half now just and depressed. every time i go home and i'm kind of in the living room i'm doing like something you know to just work on getting my posture open because mm -hmm. i mean i, I think we should a, i think we should give you helped me prime pro yeah, also absolutely so i think uh you should live in symmetry like sal said and since and it's and your idea of what you're doing you're on the right track i think we're going to give you things that are more specific though like so, your your concept of like doing it in yeah, the truck and, and being and being aware of it and kind of and doing this all the time. So I want you to go through Prime Pro 
and and assess all and it, it, we're obviously mainly okay. going to be focusing on the upper body stuff with you i'm sure your your hips and some of that can uh, you but i would with what you got going on being a baseball player tennis all those things and so dominant on the right i would focus on all the upper body type of prime pro exercises and a lot of those you can you can do those you know outside or when you're between jobs or stop and get against the wall and do some things like a lot of those things that you can just practice. That's literally what I do. <laughs> that, yeah, bro, so that's, much. that's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's good that you do that. Yeah. And I so uh, between that and symmetry, you're going to – and, you know, we did say stay out of the last phase. I would allow you, if you were my client, a workout or a week of, of, of bilateral stuff, meaning like the final phase, of just so you could feel how you're progressing. Like – Oh wow! That like it, the, each every round that you go through symmetry, yeah, just moderate intensity. Yeah, just go do a do a do a light round or a light week of those exercises just to see like oh wow this is feeling better or I'm getting better at this. I think there's some value in just testing so you can see your progress and it, that way it's motivating to like keep coming back and and working on it. I think a good goal for you, for you too, like so yeah, obviously going through symmetry and then prime pro and really addressing like your overall functionality of your shoulder like there's a lot there that you need to teach your shoulder again to be able to function properly um, and reconnect to a lot of those muscles to be able to stabilize it and pack it and all that kind of stuff um, a good goal in terms of throwing a one exercise i want you to work on exclusively is the windmill uh, and, and it's going to be insanely difficult on one side oh that one uh, yeah, it's so just because of uh, everything you're yeah, describing. Yeah, I've, I've started to do. I've started to do that some. Um, I so I go to the gym fairly often. Um, it used to be a twenty four, and then it turned into a Texans fit, and then an EOS. Mm -hmm. um, and so I I like to go um, three to four times a week. At least I try. I've been so so busy lately. Um, I clean pools and I go coach gymnastics in the evenings. Um, so when I have time, I like to go. But I do strictly like. Um, you know, kind of this stuff, more like corrective exercises instead of going in and like lifting weights. Mm -hmm. um, but every now and then I'll, I'll go in and, and mainly I'll do some, um, if I lift compound lifts, it's, uh, some bench press, some squats and some, uh, overhead presses, but really it, and it finally clicked, honestly, like two, two days ago, I finally got, it's probably the best I've ever had my kind of my, uh, um, I guess range of motion. Cause I feel like my my ribs on my left side is a little bit flared mm -hmm. and I'm assuming that's from my, uh, I, I, I call it a wing scapula and I've never actually gone to, to see if that's what it actually is. Um, but so then I'm, you know, and I'm can finally like actually feel like I'm doing like all the exercises the right way. So I know I'm, there's, I'm in the yeah. right, um, Aaron, progression, a, but it's, I guess a, figuring out. There's a few, there's a few steps here. So, well, first thing I want to say when you do symmetry, let your weaker side dictate the weight and the reps. Okay. So always, always start with the weaker side. If you're only doing 15 pounds for 10 reps with perfect form on your left, then that's what you do on the right, even though it's easy. And you're going to keep training in symmetry for, like I said, for a year, because what's going to happen, the, the steps are better control and connection. That's you're starting to notice that now. And then, then the muscle development comes. Okay. So you, you gonna have to stay there for a little while, even if it feels connected, keep training. Cause look, we're trying to undo decades of unilateral or, or, you know, set one, you know, one sided type of training or exercise or, or movement. And then the windmills are good for the QL. Like you're, you're mentioning yeah. pain in your right under your, what's called the sacroiliac joint. So you can look that up. SI joint is probably mm -hmm. where you're feeling it. And I agree with yeah. Justin. It probably has yeah, to do with where it is. Yeah, it probably has to do with your QL, right. your, your your QL muscle. There's probably a weakness and instability there. Um, so map symmetry, live in there. That's it. Don't do anything else for at least a year, and you should see significant. All of progress. this will be solved with strength, and that's what we're trying to build and develop on that side. So you have to exclusively just surrender and be 100 percent in on you know, working on that side and that's dictating what your other side does. It's also probably a good strat. It's also probably a good strategy to not be doing this in like a major cut or anything and to be more focused on maintenance to a slight surplus because we're trying to build muscle. <clears throat> you don't want to so be, like, you don't, you don't want to be on a massive. That's bolt. another thing too. I'm not, um, I've after I lost, so I guess I lost the hundred and so pounds, not so not fully healthy. Um, kind of healthy, but not really healthy. Um, I was never like trying to lose it, but I started working at Amazon. 
So I'm constantly, you know, delivering packages all day, wasn't eating very much. Um, and then that actually clicked to, then I would start eating more. Um, my main go, my, my, my go-tos were like Chipotle twice a day. Um, but now I've actually, I guess, kind of cut down. I don't know if I'm in a cut, but I've got my protein actually up. Um, I've been shedding a whole bunch recently. So um, I'm down a whole bunch of body fat already. Um, but now I'm, I'm aiming, I guess I still eat like um, intuitively. Um, I have a, the creatures of habit in the morning. And then I mainly do ground beef, rice, and veggies, or steak, veggies, there, and there, rice. There's no way for um, us. And I to, kind of have those. Well, there's no way for us already to know. Made. Yeah, do there's, what? there's no way for us to know if you know what your calories and stuff are just you know based off what you're saying. But I think what Adam's saying yeah, is don't, I don't try. Know what to, they are either. Yeah, try not to intentionally lose weight. Is, yeah. is the is the goal here? That's the main. That's the thing. idea. So if you're don't in, don't try to lose weight or yeah. cut. Just just eat the way you are. Hit your protein targets. Live in symmetry. The first few phases. Skip the last phase. And by the end of the year, you should see a significant improvement. I mean, the answer is simple. It's not easy though, because it's going to take some time. Is tough, but the the it's it's going it's going to work. One hundred percent will work as long as you're consistent. Yeah, um, and I'm. I guess I'm. The other thing too is certain body parts. I guess I'm not so sure which side is more dominant, um, because through, obviously, I'd assume my right side is, but. Then I went into quite a bit of a phase where cleaning pools I got to carry, you know, all this equipment to the to the backyards. So I would switch over to my using kind of my my left arm um, to do it. Um, but I'm maybe that is I'm assuming why my obliques on my right side is so much more dominant than my left side because I wasn't using my right hand because then I didn't want to if it even makes yeah. sense. Don't over, start, um, start don't overthink yourself. That's kind of my assumption of why my no no, no. start with the left. left Start with My the left. left oblique, isn't it? Yeah, start with the left. That's your weaker start side. Start with the left. Yep. Yeah. Start with the left. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, okay. man. Thanks for calling in, cool. brother. Yeah. Appreciate cool. it. Thank you. you Thank you. It. I appreciate it. You got it, man. All right, bro. Uh, have you guys ever worked with someone? I've, d- with I've that had kind of I've had this client uh, a, a dozen times. Just it's super, super common. Asymmetry. I I mean, he's a great person asymmetry. for the l- audience to hear us talk to live because he's an extreme version of what kind of happens to so many people. Yeah. You know, he's a, he's a very extreme. Ex- and so it's very obvious, but this is, this is going on with a lot of clients where they just have a, a dominant side and they have little nagging pains here and there. They can never figure yeah. out. And it's just yeah. that they're in but for athletes, uh, especially oh, pitchers, certain sports pitchers. I, so like, I trained, a, I trained a yep. senior in high school who could throw 90 miles an hour. This kid was, he threw heat. Wow. Never did any strength training or any balancing and was pitching forever. And I mean, you could look at him and see the structure to the point where I think even his bones on his right side were thicker and more dense. And, it, and, and I had to almost exclusively train, train him unilaterally, focusing on the weaker side, using that to dictate things because it was it was profound. Well, I mean, the hard the hard part w- is addressing someone like if he was like in like twenty and he's in the middle of playing his sports. Well, that's a different subject. Yeah, yeah. you know, like... Because they start to impact Yeah, because you can't like, really... You're going to impede on his actual performance yeah. because he's mastered this pattern, right? And that's so right. It's, yeah, so for him, he's he's interested in health and not feeling pain and, and being able to carry on with his work, uh, you know, without um, being affected too much. Yeah, it's a good message for parents, though, with kids who play sports is, uh, you know, try to balance them out because... If they do the same thing over and over again, especially a sport where that dominates one side, uh, it results well, in problems later yeah, on. Yeah, that's why it's, it's. I mean, every world-class coach I've talked to is like, you know, in terms of like young kids need to play multiple sports. Yep. So it, it definitely has a way of kind of working that way out. Our next caller is Luke from Michigan. Luke, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, guys. How we doing? Thanks for having me on. Good, man. What's Thanks up, for calling. Man? Oh, man. Well, first off, got to say thanks for all that you guys do. I've been a listener for... Probably five or six years now. Wow. So I've been listening to you guys a long time. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm like seeing you guys right here. So <laughs> yeah, thanks. Um, but yeah, just uh, give you guys a quick background. Um, former athlete, uh, played at a small college over here in Michigan. Um, ended two years because of too many concussions. But I ended up transferring, going into pre-physical therapy. Decided to do some training on the side to... Uh, you know, paper college, all that kind of stuff. But I've been training ever since. Ended up taking that as a full time position. I uh, been, or I guess it was a full time trainer for about six, seven years. Um, nutrition coach, whole nine yards. 
Um, so, you know, helped a lot of people, I guess my, my question is, um, you know, I've tried bulks, cuts, the whole nine yards. Um, obviously I'm training, I've helped a lot of people. I, I, I know the whole, um, you know, whole deal with the, with all that, but I just can never seem to figure it out for myself. You know, I'm, I'm 27 now. I got a seven month old, got a new house coming up here. So I know like the stress and everything can add to that. But, um, right now I'm at 207, probably around 16% body fat. I'd probably have to say, um, and just want to get under 200, if not, you know, 190, um, lose some body fat and just kind of get underneath those numbers a little bit. So I guess that would be, I guess my official question would be, Cause again, I've, I've done the calculator. I've done a couple calculators now where it says about 3000 cals. Um, you know, Adam, I know that you touch on, you know, weighing the food and whole night and all that kind of stuff. So I've weighed the food. Um, I know what I'm eating and usually I'm at about 27, 28. I'm still lifting, you know, at least three, if not five times a week. Um, usually full body. Um, and yeah, I just can't, if anything, I, I I'm gaining weight. So just wanted to, to kind of ask you guys, you know, your opinion on that. Yeah. So this is, um, when you get to a certain body fat, 16%, 15% is not bad. That's an athletic body fat percentage. It's a healthy body fat percentage. Now to start to get below that and then genetics aside, right? Cause some people can maintain the leaner body fat than others. But for most okay. guys, when they start to try to get below around 15, they overshoot or they start to undershoot. Okay. So what you, what you need to do is really be consistent with your tracking because you gave us an idea, but you mm -hmm. need to be really consistent for like two weeks to get exact numbers and then mm -hmm. literally hit macros on a regular consistent seven day basis and then see what ends up happening. Cause my guess is with, and this happens is very common where you'll be like, okay, I'm going to start eating a little bit less. I'm going to eat in this range. And there might be a day or two where you're a little off and not realizing how much that makes an impact on the whole thing. I mean, at 15% body fat or so, you know, if you're off for a day or two, you're just going to maintain. To get leaner right. at this point, you got to be very consistent uh, with the calories. So do you know that the story you're sharing, it's actually almost identical, like, except for, I was, uh, let's see here, how much, how much you weigh right now? You're, you're about two, 207. Okay. So you're a little bit, you were a little bit thicker than I was, but at, right around this time, it was about 25 when it happened for me. Um, I had this, I had this exact issue and I, and I've told this story on the podcast before where I was, could not wrap my brain around why can't I get like, and I literally, this is actually what drove me to using steroids. Cause at that point in my life and career, I really thought this has to be the only difference between me and those covers of magazines. Cause I got all, I've I definitely, know, <laughs> That's crossed my mind. Well, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I wouldn't go that far, but dude, I, I mean, that's totally what I thought. I really, it, I yeah. really believed at that time that all these guys on covers of magazines, the only difference between them and me is they've taken steroids. I haven't taken steroids. And so it's gotta be that, uh, what happened though, was this is around the time when the body bug came out and it was, it was a tracker. So I was now getting back feedback data day to day, every single day consistently, and it really blew my mind, the difference of my calorie expenditure and my calorie intake on my off days compared to work. Because as a trainer, you know, you're pretty damn active. You're lifting, you know, barbells, dumbbells all day, helping clients, you're moving. Man, my my calorie burn on work days versus my off days, there was a massive discrepancy. And I, in my head, I'm like, I'm 95% dialed on my diet and training. Why am I not seeing it? But what I thought was like 5% was a much bigger number than I realized until I started to track that diligently. And then the next thing to Sal's point, then it was really about stringing consistency together of like, okay, now I have a better understanding of I was not burning as much. And if I was falling off the diet or not being perfect on that one or two days, it was like the worst day I could do it. And it would make up the difference. And it would, it would be just enough to keep me at that 15 to 17%. Like I could stay again, like you healthy, healthy finish, but I couldn't get shredded. I couldn't get jacked looking. And it was like driving me crazy. And it was, I had never 
figured out to that level, like, oh my God, this is what every day looks like consistently for me. And then it was literally about stringing days together. I've told this story too, like something that worked for me was, okay, I'm going to have as many perfect days of eating in, in a row. And then let's say, you know, I strung nine of those together and then I had a little mishap where so I was off a little bit. Okay. Start over. Now the new goal is, can I get 10 or more days? And then I get to 13 mm -hmm. fell off. So, and then I just kept doing that until I could say, Hey, I just strung three, three months of perfection. And of course, that's when I started to see myself get leaner and leaner and leaner and more shredded. And then I had the tools and then I figured out, yeah. okay, now I know how to do this. Just to give you an example, Luke, like let's say you're at a calorie deficit Monday through Friday of 300 <laughs> calories. Okay. You're very consistent. You brought your meals to work. You're eating the same thing. It's 300 calorie deficit Monday through Friday. And then Saturday and Sunday, you know, you're a little looser. You try to pay attention to your protein, but you're not really tracking anything. Very, very easily, very easily, guy your size could go 700 to 800 calories above maintenance. Easy, super easy. The point where you won't even notice unless you're tracking. Well, now what you're at is zero for the week. You literally just right. made up the difference. And what and will happen is you'll maintain. And for most people, mm -hmm. most guys, if they're healthy and fit and they strength train and they don't eat terribly and they, you know, eat good protein and they generally avoid heavily processed foods, they're going to naturally, which is what's happening to you, sit at around 15%. That's a great place to be to maintain, live your life. You're probably enjoying your life. You're still consistent with your workouts. You eat mostly healthy. You do your job. It's not a big deal. But now you want to drop down another 4% or 5%. You want to get a six pack, get down to 10%. It's a lot harder than a lot of people realize not necessarily the steps, but the consistency. 10% uh, body fat, which is probably what you're aiming for, where you see your abs and you have the six-pack or whatever. 10% body fat is uh, seven days a week consistent. It just is. Yeah. It's literally one yeah. day. It's probably one day a month where you're off to be at 10%, to maintain that. That's just for most right. people. So that's, that's probably what's happening. You also mentioned you had some gut stuff, some gut issue stuff going on. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to touch on that too. Uh, but before I get to that, I, I feel like I have honestly been pretty consistent, like even throughout the weekend. Um, you know, I don't drink anymore. Um, you know, I'm still tracking on the weekend, uh, eating clean rice, quinoa, sweet potatoes, you know, meat, whole nine yards. And now granted, Again, probably to your guys' point, you know, or to Sal, what you just said, you know, it takes kind of that one day, yep. right? And obviously, you know, life hits and we all kind of have that one day. So, yeah, I could probably clean up in that area. But, yeah, to go back to the gut stuff, man, I've been, you know, it. I found out, and this is from a previous episode that you guys did, um, for your, your macro, I think it was actually the ma macro masterclass where you have to figure out kind of what works for your body. And I know for me, if I load up on carbs, like if I'm trying to do like, you know, super heavy lifts or whatever, and I want to, man, does it pay. Now I have done seed. I've, I've, I've been seeding now for probably three, four months. Uh, and I actually just started doing AG1. I've, I heard that on Huberman's podcast. Um, so I've been doing that kind of at night just to get some of those greens in as well. And that's helped. Um, I just, I, I was curious to see, especially listening to Dr. Cabral, uh, uh, Cabral's podcast as well, to see if that has to do with, um, with any sort of like body fat loss Absolutely. or anything like that as well. If like anything is off in that regard. Yeah. It'll make it harder for you. You're not going to assimilate the same. Right. You'll be a little more inflamed. Think about this too. Yep. Okay. The, maybe we have that one day here and there off, then you're in your deficit, but sometimes you're in too much of a deficit in relation to how much stress you have in your life. So even when you lose three to five pounds on the scale, you lose a ratio of 50, 50, you lose just as much muscles, you lose fat. So the body fat percentage doesn't really change for you. Right. And you add in the fact that maybe I have some underlining gut issues that are going on. And so that just compounds the stress issue. So then when my body should be building muscle, it's not, it's being prioritized to trying to heal and fix what's going on in my gut. So it could literally be just a, a handful of these little things that are compounding enough to just keep you from getting to that next level. Cause we got to keep in mind yeah. again, you're in this kind of healthy place, but I also know what it's like to be here, but want more. I want to get to the next level. Right. What is oh, it? Yeah. 
and it could be these these little things. It's like when you cut, you cut too much, and it's too much stress, and you're losing as much muscle fat. When you when you over consume, you way over consume, and it's enough to cancel your deficit out. You have underlining little gut issues that are going on, and so you add that with uh, having a kid and building a house and work life, like, and so then your body's not recovering the way it should. So then when you're in a surplus and trying to build muscle, it's not building it like it should, and so. You could have a whole bunch of little things that are just keeping you from breaking through to that next that next level, and that's Dude, really really. Common. What does your training yeah. look like these days? Like, what are you doing for weight training? Yeah, so um, I never, guys, I never got into like the bro splits, like chest day and back day and all that kind of stuff. I I pretty much started doing full body from day one. Um, so typically, how I like to split it up is. Um, you know, full body push on like day one where it's maybe more of an upper body focus. So that's where I'm hitting, you know, shoulder press, bench press, and maybe like some lunges. And then, uh, next day would be full body pull kind of more of a leg focus where I'm hitting my deadlifts. Uh, but maybe I'm doing, um, you know, some pullovers or something as an accessory. And then Wednesday is more of like a mobility honestly, probably skip day and let my body recover. Um, Thursday is then my full body push again, but maybe a little bit more leg heavy again, where it's squats and, uh, you know, things of that nature. And then, you know, some dumbbell work for the upper body. And then Friday would be my full body pull upper where I'm doing my pull-ups, you know, things of that nature. So, um, I feel like I'm hitting everything throughout the week, but you know, that's kind of another thing I, I got, I got so desperate. Well, I actually, so I'm not trained anymore. I'm in med sales now. So I, my steps are non-existent anymore. Um, mm -hmm. so that's kind of where I went from like that 3000 to like, maybe like a 2700 trying to aim for that every day. Um, but I got pretty desperate. I, well, I kind of got everybody else. Like when I, when I talked to my clients, it's like, Hey, you know, just come train with me. I'll just tell you what to do. You know, it's that easy use, right? And so one of my buddies I played uh, football with, um, he uh, was a coach at a CrossFit gym down the road. So I'm like, dude, you guys are shredding. I'm sending it. Screw it. I did CrossFit for like nine months. Um, and I tell you what, that beat me up. I have never been so sore and in pain <laughs> my entire life. So honestly, needless to say, you know, ever since we, you know, got the house, we moved. Um, I got my gym in there now or, or getting there. I'll build it here soon. Um, and yeah, I'll probably start doing, you know, my gym workouts again and maybe go in there for like a, an aerobic day. I got a punch card or something. So we'll do that. Yeah, I don't think your workouts are the issue. I think the workouts are probably fine. Uh, one thing yeah. you said about eating carbs and how you pay for it with your, with your gastro issues. That's, that's a sign. Yeah, that's yeah, huge. Yeah, that's a sign of some dysbiosis. I would definitely, if I yeah. were you, I would work with a functional medicine practitioner and treat the underlying root issue with your gut because yeah. seed seed is a really good probiotic that'll only help so much. AG one will only help so much, but if there's a, if there's a dysbiosis going on, if there's an overgrowth that's happening, um, they'll help, they'll help with the symptoms, but they often don't really solve the problem. You, you might need to go on a SIBO protocol or something like that to, to, to kind of reset and then Join go the and rebuild the, and repopulate the gut and heal the gut from that standpoint. But Luke, I, I would work with a functional medicine practitioner. Luke, are you still right. training clients? Are you still training clients? I got uh, two clients I train in the morning. Okay. Yeah, I've been training them for five, six years. Okay. I, I, only, yeah. I only ask because I didn't know how much you're still pursuing uh, training people or if you ever have a desire to rebuild or focus on that being a full-time career because there's a lot of value in going through Dr. Cabral's certification yep. and actually getting mm. uh, like, cause not, uh, so figure out your own stuff. And then at the same time, that's going to give you knowledge to be, and th then this type of stuff, I think of like corrective exercise and uh, knowledge around like gut, like what you would get with Cabral probably has to be two of the most powerful things that a coach or a trainer could have in yeah. their tool belt to help clients. Cause yeah. so many clients suffer from those two things. So uh, worthwhile investment just, just from that, that perspective. Yeah. Yeah, I will say like my mobility, my corrective exercise part of things probably ain't the greatest. 
I mean, even with like full range of motion and everything, but I feel like CrossFit did a number on me. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. my my shoulders, dude, and my knees, mm. my back has no n- like I've never had back issues. <laughs> yeah. And awesome. then all of a sudden I walk in and it's one rep max deadlift day. And I'm like, they're like, Oh, what are you gonna hit? Oh, by I'm like, I don't know, four oh five, who knows? Yeah. They're like, No. You're gonna go more than that. <laughs> <laughs> ended up ri- <laughs> ended up ripping 420 for three, and uh, yeah, I couldn't feel my back for two weeks. Yeah. Got so, I honestly it. thought I like had a bulge <laughs> disc. I'm not even kidding. Uh, Perfect yeah. form, by the way, boys. Uh, so. Yeah. If only um, somebody would. Yeah, was- yeah, if only there were signs. <laughs> if only there were, yeah, yeah, some warning from some podcast that you found. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. We just talked. No, I, I would. I would focus. Oh, I would focus number one on the gut. Uh, that's the that's gonna yeah. be the priority, and then number two, be very consistent, like every seven days a week, can, you know, with your tracking. But I'll, I'll be honest with you, Luke. I think you got to work on your gut stuff and just be look. You're at you know fifteen, sixteen percent body. You're good. You're good. And honestly, trying to cut with an underlying gut issue is gonna be really. It's gonna be a pain in the butt. Uh, no pun intended. It's gonna be tough. So I would I'll, I'll do the I, I would do the 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 gut health testing. Start with that. It'll make the cut or the bulk or whatever you decide to do later a lot easier. Oh, yeah. If you if you address it's gonna that. unlock a whole lot for you. I mean, I'm going for through sure. that right now. If you're not in our holistic health um, forum on Facebook, uh, you need to be in there because that's where we have D- Dr. Cabral and his team. If you're in there now, that's great. And and see if you can work no. with them. Oh yeah, no, okay. I'm not. Yeah, so it's free. Get in there. It's, it's yeah, free. That'd be get, sweet. get in there for sure because then you can ask questions and. If you think you have SIBO, I don't recommend this. I think you should always test. But if you think you do, there's really effective over-the-counter ways of, of treating it. You know, it used to be done with just antibiotics, but they've done a lot of studies now on natural antimicrobials. And there's di- just different formulas out there that are that have been shown in studies to be as effective as antibiotics. I think they're more effective, though, because they also work on fungal, and, you know, any fungal overgrowth or anything like that, whereas antibiotics can actually cause that to be worse. So... Uh, but definitely yeah. get in that forum, Luke. Okay. Yeah, we will do. Do you guys think the uh, macros are good too? About 2,700? That'd be so, good. That seems like it's your maintenance if that's where you're keeping it. And, and you know, like I said, yeah. what I would do if I were you is I would look at my gut, address that. Then when I'm done with addressing yeah. that, I would do a slow reverse diet, really slow, which okay. will probably get you a little leaner if everything's working out well, even on its own. Right on. And then once I got up to, let's say, 32, 3,300 calories, that's just where I – Tend to stop, then I would do a cu- then I would do a cut from there. I like that. Sweet, yeah, yeah, sounds good, boys. Thank you. you Appreciate it, it, guys. Thanks for calling in, brother. All right, thanks for having me. Appreciate yep. it. Yeah, with the with the gut being off, um, it does make things. I mean, for me, harder. yeah. And when mine was so mine would get real off. So I wasn't like when mine is off. It's not like I'm just talking like this guy. Oh, I think it's the law. If it's like off, yeah. It makes a, it's like eight pounds of lean body mass for me, at least. Well, just yeah, just alone. keep factor in the, th- the things I was saying. Like he, he could have like, he, when he does do his deficit that he says like thousand calorie, de- he could be cutting too hard with the relative to the amount yeah. of training and stress that he has in his life. Mm-hmm. So his body's not responding the, the way it should be from that. The days that he does kind of fall off the wagon, he over consumes calories enough, maybe even under eats protein, like what happened to me all the time. And so then that's enough to cancel out his, his deficit, add in the fact that he might be also battling some gut issues. So then it's just adding to that stress level. Body's not recovering the way it should be, not building muscle the way it yeah. should be. And so you could literally be perfect in all these other things and have yeah. those three things off a little bit. Yep. And that's enough to, that's enough to, uh, you know, keep him at this body fat range, which is not a bad place to be. No, it's, it's, it's healthy, an athletic range. Yeah. Look, I, I want to be very clear. If you hit your protein targets, avoid heavily processed foods and lift weights or do some kind of strength training, nothing crazy, but something consistently, you're going to naturally fall on a nice, healthy body fat percentage but you probably won't get shredded. You're yeah. probably not going to have a six pack. That's going to take all kinds of levers being perfect. That takes tracking and that takes a very, very good consistency. No, nope. Most people don't walk around doing the other things I just said and then get down to temper. Some people do, but most people won't. Can't, cannot stress the the consistency thing. Yeah. It just, it's a slow ass process. Yeah. It's a very slow process to drop body fat, dropping weight. This is why the whole, that whole thing is such a, a bad representation of like how it's like the biggest loser and shit like yeah. that. 10 pounds. And these mm. people make these radical body transformations. It's like, that's such a, a terrible representation of what it should look like. It's a very slow, gradual process that takes a lot of consistency 
to get down to the end. By the way, as you, it doesn't get easier. It gets harder. <laughs> the leaner, the leaner, you, get. The leaner oh you get. You mess the, up just a little bit. The less room for error you have. You remember being when you're in single digit body fat? Bro, it, you have you, you, like, you have like one meal. Like, one oh. day could mess up my body <laughs> fat percentage. That's what's it, like people don't understand when you're when you're hovering around four or five percent body fat. A day, one day of overeating and everything else perfection could put me up now to seven percent body fat. Like that's how crazy. Well, here's what here, here's the, here's the math. If you're two hundred pounds and you're at five percent body fat, that means you have what? What is that? Uh, 10, 10 pounds of, uh, of body fat on your body? Is that what that is? Ten pounds. Go up a pound of body fat. It's going to register in body fat percentage. Yeah, it, it makes a big impact. That's what I mean. That's why it's like so. As it gets as you get lower, you, the dis, the discipline and the consistency just gets greater. Now, what gets easier over time is one: if you've built a lot of muscle, the body responds, gets it, it gets it back. Two: when you've done this enough times, where you've gotten down to that, like you start to figure out, like, oh, these are the levers I pull for my body, because that's where we're all so unique. Like. He may be missing on the stress thing. It could be a big thing for him. It's like, oh, fuck. You know what? I was training too many days. I scaled back to three days a week. I focused on a more recovery stuff. Didn't do such a hard cut. Boom, his body respond. Like he's you, you have to figure that out. Once you figure that out, what gets easier is knowing what the answer is. Still takes that same consistency, though. Totally. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free health and fitness guides. They're all free and they're all helpful. And we reach most people with their health and fitness goals with them. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. I'm on Instagram at Mind Pump DeStefano. And Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. 